Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, What If Revive Naruto Got Harim. Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Greetings, mortal. Yuzumaki Namikaze Naruto opened sleep gummed eyes and promptly snapped them back shut. Hanging before him against the endless white was a creature straight out of nightmare, its golden black eyes framed by a wave of white tresses, bleached of all color, deathly white, from which two horns of cursum peaked. Pallid, purplish emaciated skin, ribs exposed beneath the robe. A dagger clenched firmly between its jagged teeth, its lips pulled back in a ghastly grin. He wanted to deny it, to refute its existence, but there could be no mistaking it. Shinigami, do not close your eyes. Unbidden, the last Yuzumaki watched his lids snap open, forcing him to regard the imposing apparition once more. A cold chill shot down his spine at the sight of the specter looming before him, one he quickly quelled. If he was going to hell, then he'd at least face his afterlife with dignity. Oh, it's you. Rise. The Reaper intoned. Naruto grunted, propping himself up on his elbows. So he really was dead, then. Funny. He'd always thought death would have hurt more. Not that his death had been painless, mind you, using the Shikifujin to seal away Madara's soul had been anything but painless. He'd known there would be pain, that even should he succeed nothing but hell awaited him in the afterlife. He'd known this from the beginning. He was a tenuous desperate last resort and although he'd failed to seal Abido in the bargain, he still considered it a victory. Honestly, it was still something of a miracle he'd even managed to get his hands on one of them at all, with the Jui by flinging menacing S in nearly every direction. He considered himself lucky to have accomplished half of his mission at all. Even with an undead, immortal body, nothing could have protected his immortal soul from being plucked from said body and sealed away. Granted, he'd lost an arm and a leg in the process but a win was a win in his book. Yuzumaki Naruto had left the world of the living knowing that, while he may have failed to preserve the lives of his friends and family, he'd managed to take the man responsible for their deaths, with him in the end. He could take some small solace in that fact, at the very least. He was sorrow to have lost so many, with nothing to bring them back. If I could do it over again. The world as you know it is coming to an end, mortal. The Reaper droned on, dragging out each syllable with the deep double timbre befitting of an entity of its stature. You may have sealed the one known as Uchiha Madara, but his legacy lives on. Already there is an imbalance in the souls I have come to collect. Yours is among them. You think I don't know that? Naruto allowed a single tear to slip from his eye, to plink back into the white, into oblivion. We failed. I failed. The war is over. We lost. Because they had failed. The Shinobi Alliance had been all but decimated. All but the wreckage were dead. Madara might be gone, but Abido had likely gained possession of the remaining Biju by now, his own included. His only regret was that he hadn't been able to try and drag Abido with him to hell. That man deserved to burn in the Ninth Circle for the crimes he'd committed in the name of his so-called peace not that there was anything more to be done about it. If I had another chance, even with Kurama's power, he wouldn't have been able to stand up to three Uchiha at once by himself. His one regret was that despite his best efforts to make it otherwise, his final sight before death had been that of Uchiha Abido. The last sound that of his determined growl that the Moon's Eye plan would come to fruition no matter what he narutated, that he'd at most delayed peace by preventing the world from being cast under an infinite, endless Jinjutsu. In Kanoha, Kanoha was gone. What more did the Reaper want from him? Unacceptable. Oh? Naruto creaked open a broken iris, regarding the specter of death with blank indifference. What does it matter if it's acceptable or not? They won. We lost. There's nothing I can do to change it now, so just let me croak already. Besides, it's not like I've got anything left to live for. Kakashi sensei Sakurachin, Bachin, Neji, Hanada, Shikamaru are all dead. I already know I won't be joining them. You might as well devour it now. My soul, that is. The Shinigami stared at him for a long moment, as though weighing its decision. If it was going to eat him, he just wanted it to be over with already. But the Shinigami did not devour him. Instead its gaze became aloof and distant, as though it tea were peering at something many leagues in the distance. There is an imbalance. The Reaper repeated. I cannot allow this to stand. Inwardly, Naruto bit back a groan. He had a bad feeling about this. Can't allow it to stand. The Shinigami rounded on him with a hiss of breath. The Uchiha's Jinjutsu was its growling reply as it spun away from him. With so many under its spell humanity no longer fears death, nor are there any souls left for me to reap. Unacceptable. This transgression can at all not go unpunished. White robes whistled soundlessly as it wheeled around to face him again, golden eyes ablaze. Mortal, what are you thinking in this instant? Hell, your thoughts? The Reaper repeated. I was thinking of Naruto bristled, the rest of his sentence left unspoken. He'd been contemplating what he'd done wrong, what he could have corrected if he had a second chance, a fresh start. A second chance. At first the Reaper didn't seem to register its words, its unholy eyes shrinking to mere pinpricks of brilliance. Suddenly and without warning, it reached a clawed hand up to its hair and yanked down. Hard. Naruto didn't have a chance to protest, he could only gag as his soul flowed from Reaper's mouth, and into his own, pouring life back into his body. Sensation flooded his limbs as life returned to them, enabling his body to move properly as he wished. This one would ask a boon of you mortal, undo what has been done. 
Hen, I shall return to you the yin chakra of your tenant, bequeathed to me by your father. He decided after a moment's consideration. Be thankful. Before Naruto could protest, the Shinigami removed the knife from its mouth and, without warning, plunged it to the hilt in its stomach. Gore squirted out of the wound, wrenching Naruto's stomach from within, though the wound was not his own. W what the hell are you doing? He gopped as the Shinigami dragged out a milk-white substance from its stomach that looked succinctly like was that a soul. Without a word, the Reaper drafted its essence across his prone form, suffusing his body in a warm glow from his head to his toes. He struggled to his feet, gopping as the Nine Tails chakra flared about his body, only to vanish an instant later. He could feel the power of his tenant rushing through his veins, the only absence was its conciousness. There, the Shinigami took the knife between its teeth once more. Your chakra is restored to you. Use it well and wisely. I don't want it, though. Like an iron trap, the Shinigami's gaze locked onto the Shinobi's own. The sheer intensity of its stare, the sudden ice in its expression, was enough to silence the blonde. Nothing moved, nothing at all. And then it spoke, voice black as pitch, eyes cold as the coldest winter. Your soul is already in my domain, mortal. The Shinigami rumbled. It is now mine to do with as I please. You have no say in the matter. Regarding that, you will require more than just the chakra of your tenant to succeed in your mission. Much more. Naruto felt his stomach twist in disgust and revulsion as the Reaper plunged a long-fingered hand deep into the gaping wound in its stomach driving its arm to the elbow as it sought something within its innards. Naruto looked away, unable to bear such a sight. Rather, he tried. Something in those golden black orbs riveted him, forcing him to look on as the Shinigami finally found what it sought. Abruptly it stilled, its cold eyes locking upon Naruto. Prepare yourself. Prepare myself for what? Hard Naruto cried out in pain and surprise as the scalding liquid struck his eyes, searing itself into his retina. He doubled over in utter agony. It felt like someone had plunged burning brand into both his eyes. They burned, oh dear Kami, did they burn ya? What the hell did you just do? He glowered at the Shinigami, or at least, what he thought was the Shinigami. Everything was so blurry he could barely make out coherent shapes. The Reaper laughed. It was a deep, throaty sound. Behold yourself and the blessing I have given you, Yuzumaki Naruto. It paused, contemplating. Or perhaps I should call you Uchiha Naruto. The Reaper beckoned, indicating the reflective surface that served as the ground at their feet. Naruto followed its direction and balked alarm to find a stranger staring back at him. His blue eyes were gone dark into almost charcoal, his hair having faded to black as well. His skin was a tad paler than he remembered it being, having lost most of the luster it had gained over the years. It was still his face, whiskers and all, but even as he looked on those faded, diminished in the wake of this strange transformation. He scarcely recognized himself. His visage was still his own somehow, only not. Thankfully, the voice that emerged was still his own, if that had changed he would have lost his mind. W what have you done? The Shinigami offered a rictus of a grin. Consider it proof of my trust in you. I look like a Yingachua. That was my intent. The godlike entity replied. Your existence as Yuzumaki Naruto will pose a hindrance to the task I have assigned you, thus, you are Achiha. Boy Naruto hissed out in a fierce whisper. Cut the crap I don't give two shits. if you're the reaper or not don't go changing people's faces without asking. You know I don't want this and I sure as in hell don't want these damned eyes Madara's eyes now change me back right now or... Or, the reaper met his ire with a flat stare and licked its lips. If you'd rather I consume your soul here and now, then by all means, I shall do so. Naruto blanched, his resolve wilting in the face of this threat. While it was true he'd accepted his demise, he wasn't all that eager to enter into the belly of the beast. If there was something anything could do to right the wrongs made by Madara and his twisted ideals he should jump at the chance, right. But he was tired. Oh so very tired. Tired of fighting. And if the Shinigami really was about to return him to the land of the living, it would be his one chance, his only chance, a chance to make things right. A chant from the land of the dead. You will act in my stead. The apparition continued on unheeded, but on one condition, you must undo the damage that has been done. Right the wrongs of the past, correct the mistakes of the old generation for the sake of the young. I will give you as much time as needed. But know this, if you fail your assigned task you will suffer the consequences of your actions. Should you falter, your deeds will be known to me. Should you hesitate, I will come for you. Should you perish, before completing your assigned task, I will devour you, trapping your soul in my stomach until the end of time. This is our pact. This is our contract. But we have tarried in limbo too long. There is work to be done, and you are the one who must do it. Don't I get any say in this. Naruto groaned. None the reaper growled. Now be off with you. Now wait just a damned min. Ute. Naruto blinked and the white was gone. In its place hung a full moon, peeking out beyond the rim of the clouds, gazing upon a sea of trees below. Falling. Falling he snarled in surprise, flinging a hand out to snare the nearest branch in his grasp, his fingers wrapping around the damp pines like an iron vice. Grunting as he struggled to arrest it his momentum, the former Jinchuriki tethered himself to the tree with chakra, sticking to its surface as one with the ground. He hung there for a moment, his senses still reeling from the sudden drop in pressure. Oi, oi, he grumbled to himself, at least drop me on solid ground, you know. He frowned up at the moon, evidently Abido had yet to enact the moon's eye plan. Inwardly, he heaved a sweet sigh of relief. Thank Kami in heaven. There was still time, then. 
time enough to find that prick of an Uchiha and drag him down to hell then he would find Sasuke, beat the ever-loving crap out of him and him. What have we here? Taking a moment to orient himself, he caught sight of a telltale flicker of movement only a few feet below his perch. Stilling his breath he waited until they were passed before taking stock of them. Three grown men, and one girl with strikingly scarlet hair. She couldn't have been more than four years younger than him, placing her near fourteen or fifteen years of age. He couldn't see their faces as their backs were to him, even so he doubted he would have been able to make them out in the gloom. Still, something struck him as odd. Though the group of shinobi encircled her, suggesting they weren't, in fact, an escort after all, her hands were held behind her back. Why would anyone walk like that? A knot of rope around her wrists merely confirmed his suspicion, as did the hands of the man who held it. Kidnappers Naruto's mind raged, torn between reluctance and resistance. Did he really have the time to play hero right now? For all he knew, Abaito was preparing the moon's eye plan even as he dithered here. Eventually anger won out, he felt his eyes begin to burn as he watched them creep further and further away, blissfully unaware of his presence. That didn't last long. He descended feet first from the trees, dropping like a wraith toward the head and shoulders of the straggler, the one holding the rope. There was a brief moment of tense silence, the man's knees buckling beneath his sudden and unexpected weight his fingers falling slack around as he reached up to remove the obstruction. By the time he'd realized his own peril Naruto's hands had already closed around his mouth and face, muffling his cry of pain as his knees struck the damp earth. The Jinchuriki felt no pity for his victim, a vicious twist of the wrist and he was gone, the life leeching from his eyes before his body could touch the ground. Naruto bolted upwards from the corpse and lunged forward, hoping to take the remining shinobi by surprise. And for a moment, it seemed that he would. Both men still had their backs to him, they were yet unaware of the sudden demise of their compatriot, ignorant that their captive had slowed her pace to a near crawl behind them. Naruto dared to hope he might yet escape from this scuffle unscathed and continue on his way. His hope shattered as a small squeak pierced the air. Both men rounded as one, a brace of shuriken flying from their fingertips in the time it took a lesser man to blink. Thankfully, Naruto was not a lesser man. In the time it took the girl to squeak in surprise he'd already dropped flat to the road, the deadly throwing stars now whistled harmlessly over his head. As the last of the lethal projectiles whisked themselves by he was already in motion, lunging into the moonlight, throwing himself between the men and their captive before they could even comprehend his presence. Beneath the light of the moon, he was finally afford a clear picture of her captors, and they, him. Their faces weren't even remotely worth mentioning, although they did stiffen as he stood to his full height. Oi oi the hell do you guys think you're doing? Naruto growled, recognizing their hishiate as belonged to Kumagakure. Doesn't your rakage have better things to do than kidnap little girls? We're in the middle of a war for Chris Aches he balked as the two remaining cloud shinobi exchanged a glance, took one look at him, then at his hishiate, and drew their kanai. Shit, and Uchiha one of them exclaimed. Hey I'm not in. Kill him cried the other. A muscle jumped in the blonde's jaw. Try me. Gua. The last of her abductors toppled backwards, gurgling as he clutched at his now broken windpipe with both hands. Naruto contemplated him a moment longer savoring his stricken expression, before a roundhouse kick smashed into his now unprotected stomach. A third and final blow put him out of commission altogether, sending his body careening through the undergrowth. Naruto watched him fall and had to visibly bite back a laugh at the ease with which he dispatched his opponents. And to think they called themselves shinobi. Their movements were slow and predictable it was almost laughable. No, it was laughable. He needn't have killed those two, but with those injuries, they wouldn't be waking up for a good long while. A soft whimper abruptly reminded him of his place. Yuachiha. Naruto rounded on the voice with an exasperated hiss, his eyes wild and stopped. The red-headed girl was looking up at him with something akin to shocker perhaps it was all. He couldn't be certain of it in the dim light. He was, however, certain that she was looking at him. Oi, a nut. He frowned down at her, the words dying on his lips as he caught a glimpse of himself in a nearby puddle. Sinister scarlet orbs stared back at him, ringed by a single tamo in each iris. Sharing an. Naruto bristled at the sight of the cruel crimson eyes, unable to accept that they belonged to him, to the sinister visage staring back at him. So it wasn't a dream after all. The Shinigami really had ed with his DNA, apparently that angry outburst earlier had been enough to unlock the vaulted eyes of the clan. Not his clan. Not Naruto refused to think of himself as one of those stick up there Avengers, even with his newfound powers and appearance going hand in hand. Damn you to hell Shinigami. He contemplated the quivering Kanoakish had to be at least a genin for what felt like an eternity. Clearly judging by her Hishiatish was from Kanoa. But why would Kumo try to kidnap someone so suddenly? There was a war on, for the love of Kami what possible purpose could the kidnapping of a single soul serve? Ah, uh, hell. He had to at least try and get her back to Kanoa. She didn't look to be in any real shape to make it back on her own anyway. Hey you alright? He asked. She continued to stare at him, her mouth agape. Naruto took a deep breath and closed his eyes. When next they opened he saw no hint of the accursed copy wheel in them. Hello? Anyone home? Scowling, he waved a hand before her face, eliciting a slow series of blinks. Doubtless she was still in shock over her recent release. How? Hem, how did you find me? She asked softly. She speaks Naruto couldn't help but chuckle to himself. As to how I found Yawel, I guess you could thank your hair. 
He didn't feel like explaining to her how he had literally fallen out of the sky. Still, there was something oddly familiar about this girl. But what was it? The eyes? Her hair? He couldn't quite place his finger on it. Inexplicably, the girl flushed. You you followed me because of my hair. Not just because of your hair. Naruto tried and failed to keep the grin from his face as he poked at her hishiate. Because you're a comrade. You know what they say, those who break the rules are s, but those who abandon their comrades are even worse than s. As he looked on her cheeks continued to darken, as though heated by a furnace from within. Why was she blushing? Shrugging, Naruto stooped to untie her, slicing through the knot binding her wrists with a simple slice of a kunai. The girl mumbled her thanks and rubbed at her wrists, still refusing to look him in the eye. Strange, she refused to look at him even after he'd saved her. It hardly looked as though she'd be walking back to the village, either. Seeing no other way, he reached down and smoothly swept the genin off her feet as easily as a groom would his blushing bride. They got a reaction out of her. The Kanoichi sputtered in surprise, her face flaring a shade brighter than even her silky scarlet hair. Hey W wait a minute she cried, W W what are you doing? Isn't it obvious? Naruto couldn't believe her gall, here he was trying to help her, and still she was being indignant you can't walk, so I'm carrying you. The girl grew still at this, her large eyes growing larger still. It was as if she were truly looking at him for the first time. What's your name? Yuzue Amuchiha Naruto he instinctively amended, cursing himself for using that cursed clan name. And just who the might you be, Chibai? The girl puffed out her cheeks in defiance. I'm not a Chibai my name is Yuzumaki Kushina, Databane. Databane? Naruto dropped her like a hot potato. He felt color drain from his face, felt a cold sweat break out across his broken and battered body. Before his mind shut down, he understood two things. First, and foremost, this little girl was beyond any shadow of a doubt, his mother. Second, apparently when the Shinigami had tasked him to right the wrongs of the past he'd been speaking literally, as well as figuratively. Because this little girl was his mother and she was wearing a Kanoha Hishiate and he had the succinct feeling he wasn't in his own time anymore. Oh dear Kami, hey, are you alright? A girl who would one day become his mother asked, you're looking kinda pale. And what did Naruto do upon realizing this, you ask? Great Scott. Why, he fainted of course. Hey, are you awake? Abido. Naruto bolted upright with a startled snarl, eyes blazing, fingers wrapping around the first thing within reach and dragging it forward. A tiny feminine eep sounded somewhere off to his right plucking him from the last vestiges of his nightmares at last second, one second too late. He found himself face to face with a young Yuzumaki Kushina, her visage hanging perilously close to his own. Her cheeks were an incredibly bright shade of sweet scarlet, probably because she was sitting in his lap, her nose was brushing against his, lips dangling mere centimeters away. Oh, shit. Memories came flooding back, reminding him just why he'd been out cold in the first place. He had fainted. Fainted, because he'd realized the awful truth of the Reaper's words, righting the wrongs of the old generation for the sake of the new hadn't been a mere metaphor. They'd been literal at first he failed to understand what he had to gain by going this far back in time, then reality hit. He could fix everything. He wouldn't lose his friends, or his family, nor his parents to Abido. That's right, he would find Abido and wait, had Abido even been born yet. Narutasen. Naruto bristled at his mother's words, he'd learnt enough about his youth to expect a painful blow and recompense for his temerity. But none came. To his infinite disbelief she turned her head aside, her eyelids drooping slightly shut in what might have been embarrassment or wait. Wait just a damn minute. She wasn't expecting him to. Why you're hurting me? She whispered. Duo. Naruto forced himself to relax his grip, his teeth sinking into his lower lip until he tasted. That was close. Too close way too close he'd nearly at his own mother although, looking at her now, it was hard to think of her as such, difficult to reconcile this blushing vixen only just entering into adolescence with the woman he'd met inside his seal. Did she already have Kirama sealed inside her, he wondered. If so, did the old fox retain any memory of him? Or had his mind been wiped clean, so much like everyone else? He ruthlessly resisted the urge to inquire about his former tenant. He knew from experience just how bitter the life of a Jinchuriki could be. Hey, him. Naruto glanced down at his mother, mildly alarmed to find her still chewing on her lower lip, squirming restlessly in his lap. Just how long do you intend to H hold onto me like this? Once more, he silently suppressed the urge to panic. Although he had loosened his grip on Kushina's hand, he still hadn't let go of her waist just yet. Well, damn. Naruto forced himself to retract his arm, allowing the Kanoichi to skitter backwards and out of arm's reach. Sorry, he muttered. Determined to distract himself, the Yuzumaka turned Uchiha hazarded a glance at their surroundings, taking in the small clearing they had apparently made camp in. The warmth afforded by the small fire burning behind served as their sole source of their illumination, thrusting their shadows against one another at odd angles. As he looked on, the flames flickered and grew dim. They couldn't have that now, could they? Drawing a deep breath in his lungs, he molded some chakra in his stomach, forming a single seal with his left hand. Kushina's gaze flicked toward him as he did so. Katten. Without another word, he exhaled, expelling a thin stream of flames into the flickering blaze. Burgeoned by the fire, it leapt to life, brightening their surroundings considerable, a marked improvement on the dim lights offered earlier. When he returned his attention to the clearing, he found the Kanoichi staring at him. A Harigedu. 
Kashina whispered, wringing her hands together. Naruto titled his head to the side, the universal way to Goha. But the Kanoichi only flushed ever darker. Hi, Mo, she exclaimed, her face flushed with anger. I'm trying to thank you for saving me back there, Databane. Well, excuse me, Databeo Naruto couldn't help himself. The words alongside his verbal tickled from his lips before he could stop them. Kinda hard to tell when you're shouting at me, you know. At these words, Kushina stiffened, her eyes bulging so large. Her son was certain they'd fall right out of her pretty little head. Crap, Naruto's mind scrambled for an explanation, desperate to explain his verbal tick before his mother had a chance to put two and two together. Oi, it was so ridiculous that Kushina could not hold back her laugh. When was the last time she had laughed? Certainly not since she'd come to Kanoa, not since she'd become a genin. For a moment, Naruto looked at her like she was nuts, but when he realized she was laughing at his comment and not at him, he grinned. Inwardly, he was taken aback. He'd been expecting confusion, not laughter. Hakushina covered her mouth as she snickered, fighting back another fit of giggles. I thought I was the only who did that never thought I'd hear it from Anachia despite himself. The former blonde sweat dropped at the girl WHRO would one day become his moth. Was she really going to accept such an implausible answer based solely on her own observations? I, well, he shrugged to himself, might as well play along. Well, I'm not like most Uchiha. Yeah, I noticed. Kushina beamed, a bright smile lighting up the features of her face. For starters, you don't have a gigantic stick up your ass. Naruto tried his best not to laugh, he really, truly did. But the moment his mother mentioned the word stick and ass, it was all he could do to contain himself. He'd chosen those very same words years before in his youth to describe the antisocial tendencies of a certain Avenger. For his own mother to throw them back in his face was simply too much for him to bear. He snickered, sharing and flaring anew, in response to the sudden emotional outbutst. He half expected Kushina to flinch at the sight of them, the redhead didn't so much as bat an eyelash. Why are you laughing? She asked. Because it's true Naruto guffawed, momentarily forgetting himself in his good humor. The Uchiha do have a stick up their ass. His mother looked at him like he was crazy, hell she probably thought he was. Hey, that's your own clan you're talking about there, Titebane. Yeah. Naruto's laughter stilled in his throat as he caught sight of himself in a nearby puddle, gazing upon his reflection with intent. He cut an imposing figure in his jounin uniform, although he still loved the color orange, the war had been particularly unkind to his old jumpsuit, forcing him to give it up long ago, before he'd lost everything. He pushed a hand through the shaggy raven mess that was once his blonde hair, idly marveling at the man who stared back at him. Having been promoted to Jonin shortly before the Juyubai laid waste to what remained of Kanoa, he'd garnered a considerable repertoire of ninjutsu, in addition to his already countless odd variations of the Reisenjin and Reisenshuriken. Looking at himself now, he couldn't help but wonder, would he still be able to use them? Would his contract with the Toads exist in this time? Would he be able to use Senjutsu? Horatian, his reflection offered a nervous smile in recompense for his temerity. But it was his pair of blazing line orbs that riveted him. Instead of a single mark in the Sharingan, as he'd seen before, a pair of twin Tamo circled angrily in each of his eyes, spinning with such speed they seemed little more than a black blur. He quelled them with an effort, but calming his troubled mind did not prove nearly so simple. What the hell was going on here? He was certain there'd been only one Tamo the last time he had looked No, there were two granted. He knew precious little when it came to the vaulted eyes of the Uchiha clan. What he did know came from mostly second-hand knowledge, and Kakashi sensei For a sharing and to simply gain another Tamo without cause was unheard of. Then Naruto remembered to whom these eyes belonged, and suddenly, everything made sense. Nadara's eyes were evolving on their own. They had to be. There could be no other explanation. A sudden thought chilled him to the bone. If they were indeed evolving off their own accord, would they become the dread Manchikaio sharing and on their own? Ansif gained that, it was only a matter of time until he became blind. And, thanks to his situation he lacked a sibling or parent to swap eyes with. Narutasen, the former blonde blinked, jostled from his reverie by Kushina's concerned expression. Naruto, he replied. Just Naruto will do. His mother flushed. Th then Naruto may I ask you a question? Shoot. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Naruto nearly fell over. Seventeen. He answered, yielding his true age without thinking. I'll be eighteen in a couple of months. Assuming I don't get myself killed before then, he added to himself. My turn. He peered at her a moment, his eyes intent. Urelan guess, thirteen. Fifteen cushion is shot back. My birthday was last week. Naruto managed a weak laugh. I'm happy belated birthday. Her anger seemed to abate a bit at that, her gaze softening as she looked upon him. What? It's just, Kushina fidgeted, you're one of the first to wish me a happy birthday since I came to Kanoa. Huh. Naruto tilted his head aside, struggling to remember what little he did know about his mother. You've gotta be kidding me. No one's wished you a happy birthday. Kushina bobbed her head in acknowledgement to his words. It was all Naruto could do not to shout. From what she'd told him of it, her life in Kanoa hadn't been particularly pleasant in the beginning. What to think she'd not have her own birthday celebrated, just like him was this too, because of the Kyuubai. Not since I left Yuzugakure, no. Well, I'll get you a present when we get back, or something. Naruto viciously bit back the urge to clamp a hand over his mouth as soon as he spoke, he'd just overplayed his hand. 
In his desire to cheer his mother up, to banish her melancholy mood, he'd gone and risked making a fool of himself. Probably already had Kushina stared at him with wide eyes, her expression torn somewhere between delight and disbelief. Eventually she seemed to settle upon the former, much to Naruto's eternal charine. You know what? She decided suddenly, I'm going to hold you to that. Especially since you're only the second Uchiha to be this nice to me. Who was the first? He wondered aloud. Mikatachin. Kushina brightened as soon as she uttered the name. She's my best friend. You'd probably like her. Mikoto. Something stirred in Naruto's memory at the mention of that name. He couldn't quite put his finger on it. Hadn't he heard that one somewhere before? Surely he had. I well, if the name was that important then he'd remember it sooner or later. Say Narutasan. Yeah, can I ask you something else? What is this? Twenty questions. Naruto laughed lightly. It was so damnably strange talking to a younger version of his mother that didn't mean he wasn't enjoying himself, though. After the horrors he'd endured with the Fourth Shinobi War, it was a welcome relief just kick back and relax, Evni if only for a little while. At her crestfallen expression, however, he waved her on. Promise you won't laugh. I just single-handedly saved you from three enemy shinobi. The dead pen was barely concealed. I don't think I'm going to be laughing at you anytime soon. As I recall, you also dropped me. Kushina pointed out scathingly. You also fainted the minute I told you my name. Sorry for that. Naruto flushed in embarrassment. He silently swore he would never, ever faint again, no matter how embarrassed or surprised he might be. Anyway, you wanted to ask me something. W well yeah, T Tebane. Kushina leaned backward on her haunches, looking anywhere but at him. But this is just out of curiosity. Naruto sweat dropped. He didn't recall his mother ever being this evasive. Is there supposed to be a question in there? All right. All right. The genin shook her head, her cheek burnished a sweet shade of scarlet. I'm just going to come out and ask Naruto steepled his fingers and laid his chin upon them, doing his best to keep the smile from his face as she struggled to formulate her inquiry, his own embarrassment forgotten. Do you have a girlfriend? Ah, oh, and there it was again. This time, Naruto really did fall over of all the things to ask him, she asked that. Groaning, he dragged himself back onto the log, only to find Kushina eyeing him intently, her violet orbs piercing him where he stood. Damn it. Though she was easily two years his junior, he found he just couldn't bring himself to deny her when it came to questions such as these. He could have lied to her, vehemently denied it, but in the end, he chose the truth of a different sort. In and oh. He admitted, the words burying in his throat. I don't. Not anymore. Another half-truth. He'd led a brief and tenuous relationship with Sakura sometime after the war broke out, one that had begun shortly after Sasuke's death and ended far too quickly, cut brutally short by her death at the hands of Achiha Abaido only a month later. Yet another reason Naruto was looking forward to tracking down that Sonova in this time and wringing the life out of his lungs. If that made him a murderer, then so be it. He just couldn't bring himself to forgive that asshole for killing the only girl he'd ever loved. Oh, she must have seen his murderous expression, because the inquisitive lilt faded from her eyes. I'm sorry. She sputtered. I didn't mean to. No, don't be. Naruto shook his head. It happened a long time ago. I'm over it. No, he thought with a pang of regret, he was not over it. Sekura's death still cut him like a knife at times. They could have had something special, something wonderful. That month, brief though it might have been, had been the best month of his life. They'd been each other's first. There had been talk of starting a life together, of raising a family, when their war was finally over. And then Abido gutted her like a pig. He would never forgive him for that. Never. Naruto was normally a peaceful person most of the time was undertaking this. For that very reason but for that man, he would make an exception. A very painful exception. Was she special to you? Kashina asked with renewed interest. Now that she knew he wasn't angry with her, she seemed intent to milk him for every little detail. Naruto was happy to oblige her. It was always better to focus on the happy times than the dower, after all. Yeah. Naruto felt a wistful smile tug at his lips. She was. What happened to her? She died. Kashina flinched. Naruto didn't blame her. No, oh, not their baka that tickles. Even now, he could still hear her laughter. He felt his heart lurch a little bit. Although Sakura had long since passed, the pain of that passing still surprised him sometimes. It was like a punch in the gut. A soft touch on his sleeve drew his attention. Naruto blinked in surprise, startled to find Kushina's hand resting on his own. I'm sure she loved you very, very much. Naruto bit back a laugh. Ironic that he was the one being consoled here. By his own mother. She didn't press him for details and she didn't tell him how sorry she was for his loss. She didn't berate him for pursuing the path of revenge in the first place. Since rescuing her only hours before, she had not even tried to pester him about what his true intentions were, which was more than a little puzzling. She just looked at him, with those overlarge violet eyes and held his hand. She was just there, supporting him in silence and not asking anything of him. Mystified, Naruto felt like she understood a little of what he was saying. He found himself intertwining their fingers just to see what it felt like. Yeah, he said. After Sakura's death, the only time he really came into actual physical contact with other people in the future was when he was fighting them. That had been life with the fourth Shinobi War. That was the life he'd lived after losing his love, a life full of loneliness and distrust. 
It was all he'd known for the last year of his existence. Feelings like those didn't fade away overnight. Must have been my smoldering good looks. He muttered to himself reflecting on his change in appearance. It was difficult to accept he was here, trapped in the past, in a body he barely recognized as his own. Difficult but not unacceptable. Now that he was here, could change things for the better, correct all those mistakes made, help all those who suffered. But he had to be careful. If he changed too much, if he altered the timeline with impunity, he might wipe out lives that had yet to be born. Although he was still struggling to find a way to go about that. Come on. She rose and tugged on his hand, indicating a pair of sleeping bags she'd laid out near the firelight. You should probably get some sleep, t -tabain. We're going to have a long walk back to Kanohe in the morning. Yeah, he said again. He allowed her to guide him off the log and they broke their contact as they started walking. Her long crimson swished behind her with each step, drawing his attention. It almost seemed to glow in the firelight, like the color of... He thought it was beautiful. He'd always envied not having his mother's pretty crimson hair. It was all he could do not to reach out and touch it. Just a little. By the way, I think you are. Kushina spun to face him abruptly, tresses twirling about her in a curtain of scarlet. Naruto stiffened, his hand frozen in the process of reaching out toward her. Bar, he asked. Handsome, I mean. The Yuzumaka turned Acha chuckled, his spirits restored. He didn't mind accepting a compliment from his mother. Is that so? Kushina beamed at him, and her smile was like sunshine in the warmth of the fire. Let's get some sleep then, shall we? She turned in place. We're pretty far from the border, I think. We should be safe here. Her gaze flicked toward the flames in an unspoken question. Naruto nodded, stepping past her, eyes narrow with intent. I'll put out the fire. Without even thinking he flicked through a simple set of seals, drawing chakra into his stomach. Not for the first time was he grateful for expanding his repertoire of jutsu. Sutan, Mizurapa. With a brief exhalation he doused the flames with water, soaking the roaring blaze to its core. Allowing his eyes to adjust to the blackness, found that Kushina had already begun to tuck herself into the nearest sleeping bag, the smallest of smiles dancing on her lips. What? Oh, nothing. He could have sworn he heard her whistle in the gloom. It's just, that makes three now. Wind, fire, and now water. Naruto allowed himself to arch an eyebrow, so Kushina had seen him use that wind jutsu during his earlier scuffle with her two captors. Just how chakra natures do you have? Well, I'm a very skilled shinobi. A flicker of motion in his peripherals brutally derailed his words and the train of thought, shattering his good mood like so much glass. Naruto frowned, his gaze shifting from Kushina, sliding across the clearing, tracking with the movement. They're lingering just beyond the light of the fire. A shadow, but not just any shadow. Human, crouched low and toward the brush, obviously intent on remaining hidden. A shinobi. Shit. Naruto gave no outward sign that anything was wrong. He merely kept his gaze trained on Kushina, all the while eerily aware of their Sunto attacker closing in behind them. It was only when he caught sight of the telltale flash of a Kumigakure Hishiate that he permitted himself a soft snarl. Shit. Shit. Naruto. Kushina said his name, but she may as well have whispered to him for all the good it did. His mind was already working, trying to figure out where he'd gone wrong. Shit. 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 He cursed himself for not realizing it sooner. Shinobi always operated in a four-man cell. Always, he'd taken out three of them guarding Kushina, which meant the fourth had likely been on recon at the time. Well, if he thought he'd get him with his guard down, he would be sorely disappointed. Slowly, the man pulled what looked like a giant shuriken from his back, committing a few precious seconds to drawing the ungainly weapon. A slow smile plucked at the corners of Naruto's mouth. He'd been waiting for just that opportunity. Gotcha in the time it took the man to position the weapon, the former genin had already closed the distance between them. A faint draw upon what remained of the Kyubai's chakra was more than enough. Akane slid down his sleeve and into his awaiting hand, thrust forward now into the stomach of the stunned shinobi. Are there any more of you? Naruto hissed as he watched the light leave the man's eyes. Answer me. His target sneered, lips quirking in a triumphant smile. Fool. To the blonde's infinite dismay, the man vanished in a plume of smoke leaving a harmless log behind. Substitution even as he registered the feint, the dull buzz of a throne shuriken reached his ears, resounding louder and louder with each passing second. Kushina's scream ripped through his ears like a knife. Kushina. She was their target. There was no time to think, only for reaction. Naruto forcibly drew upon Kirama's chakra once more, willing the golden cloak to enfold his body, augmenting his already inane speed. He surged backwards from whence he came, shearing through entire branches in his haste, uncaring as they tore and slashed at his face. Please let me be in time. Try as she might, Yuzumaki Kushina couldn't bring herself to understand what just happened. One minute she'd been chatting amicably with Naruto. She found she quite liked the Ucha, he was smooth and easygoing, a good talker, nothing like the rest of his clan. He'd single-handedly saved her from being taken to Kumo, where death or torture or worse awaited her. That alone spoke volumes for his character. She still couldn't see why he'd fainted after she told him her name, but even that had become a fleeting thought once he'd opened up to her. And she maybe kinda sorta found him so maywat attractive. The next thing she knew her savior narrowed his eyes in consternation, spat a foul oath beneath his breath and darted into the black of the woods. At first, Kushina had thought she'd upset him. Then she heard it, the distinctive wump of a substitution technique. Her turn to ice in her veins. An attack. 
but they were supposed to be safe here. The droning buzz of a massive shuriken filled her ears, shattering that misconception. Kushina yelped and staggered backwards, sparing herself a swift end. A warm ribbon of pain slashed across her shoulder as the deadly missile whirled past, leaving her stunned and shaken. Someone was screaming at her, but she couldn't hear them, her ears still ringing from her close call. Kushina Naruto's voice rang out from behind her flank, the fear and desperation in his words piercing her deafness, rooting her in place, down. Kushina had only the time to blink as a golden blur cut across her visin, knocked her to the ground in an instant and hurling itself atop her. And not a moment too soon. The Yuzumaka turned Acha grunted in surprise as something sharp slashed through his jumpsuit and bit into his lower back. The unfamiliar edge of a massive shuriken burrowing into his flesh, nearly causing his arms to buckle, threatening to throw him forward and onto her altogether. A thin line of leak between his lips, spattering onto Kushina's cheek. She gawped at him, violet eyes wide, mouth frozen in an open oval. The words hitched in her throat, refusing to come no matter how much she might want them to. W.Y. She whispered. Naruto opened his mouth to speak. All that emerged was. Bakayeru. He hissed through clenched teeth. You act like cough I needed a reason to save you. His lips quirked in a pained smile. After all, you're the same as me. When I he bit off the word, lost my parents, no one ever complimented or recognized me. Being the bad student I was, I screwed up a lot during class on purpose because I wanted to get everyone's attention. It didn't matter if they laughed at me or cursed me. I couldn't get anyone's attention when I tried so I acted like an idiot. It was like I was an outsider. You know how that feels, right? She did know how that felt. For the longest time she'd thought herself alone. Makoto was one of her only friends, even so, she was oft on missions and could be there for her when she needed her the most. Like now, for instance. Now as she lay there, helpless to do anything but watch bitter tears well in his eyes. It was tough. Right, Kushina? He asked. You were lonely? Right. I'm sorry. Yao shouldn't have to feel that way. I'll try to do something about that this time around. Kushina's heart nearly leapt into her throat as he slumped forward, falling atop her, collapsing into her arms like so much dead weight. She wanted to weep as his eyes slid shut, had he just died in her arms. No, he couldn't die, not here, not now. No, Kushina gasped in surprise as her eyes snapped scarlet and slitted, a soundless sob exploding from the back of her throat. She knew Kyubai was taking advantage of her emotionally unbalanced state, using this chance this chink in her armor to take control. Even so, she could bring herself to stop him. Couldn't, as her hair stood on end, the crimson cloak creeping across her body, sheathing her like a second skin. Hate she couldn't think of anything else. She hated fate, loathed it, despised it for giving her someone special, someone she could talk to, and then just as swiftly wrenching them away in the blink of an eye. No, a red haze draped itself over Kushina's vision, blinding her to all else. She felt the boiling chakra roil around her, twitching in anticipation of slaughter to be had. There out of the corner of her eye, she saw him. The one who'd killed Naruto. Murderer she snarled at him and he got back at her, his mouth forming an open oval of outright disbelief. He took a small, staggering step backward. That was all he managed before she pounced, shrieking like a banshee. Chains of chakra her one true tail and burst from her back, coiling forward even as she descended upon the Kumo Nin, a specter of death and destruction. Somehow, the man managed to draw his sword before she fell upon him, shrieking and spitting and slashing. It would do him little good. She felt cold steel bite into her cheek but once before her chain seized upon it and ripped it from his grasp, leaving him open to for her finger snow clostow ripped through his white vest and into his stomach. Him monster the man rasped. Shut the up she screamed, baring her fangs in a sibilant snarl. I'll then kill you, t -tabane. Her chakra chains hit him squarely and then slammed him back into a tree. He didn't scream, didn't cry out, but his mouth formed a tight grimace and his eyes looked up at her, pleading. Mercy, they seemed to say, please don't kill me. Kushina wasn't feeling merciful. Her chains thrust deeper, driving through flesh and bone, pinning him to the bark of the tree, skewering his body. She held him under the arms and looked into those eyes and watched the life drain out of them. Memories of loneliness flooded her and she felt the rage rise. Alone. She was alone again. The one person who had saved her, the only individual who'd shown her that smile, was no longer with her. He was gone. And it was this one's fault something inside Kushina twisted at the realization. She raised a clawed hand, intent on carving up the Kumo Nin's corpse. She would slaughter him, tear him to pieces she'd. Boy, a hand closed around her wrist, heedless of the scalding chakra searing into their skin. Kushina rounded on them ready to cut down her attacker. Instead she jerked back as if she'd been burned. Naruto. She found the Uchiha looming over her, peering down at her with intent sharing and blazing into her crimson orbs. Scarlet met Scarlet and the latter yielded. Relief flooded her like a wave, obliterating the rage before it had any chance to mount any sort of counterattack. Bereft of a means to control her any longer, Kyubai's chakra dissipated, evaporating around her like so much steam. He's dead. The Uchiha rumbled. No need to carve up his corpse. Kushina's eyes widened. She had not been expecting this at all. But I thought. I was dead. Naruto arched an eyebrow. The corners of his mouth lifted, quirking into a wry grin. Sorry, but I won't die that easily. 
He weighs a lift. But his wound she thought. Baka she sobbed, her fists curling feebly against his. Baka 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 I thought you died thought you were dead. And an RGH. Naruto doubled over in her embrace with a groan, touching a hand to his back. His hand came away covered with. You're hurt. It's just a flesh wound. He chuckled, waving her concerns aside. Don't worry, I'll heal. Wad him in S.H. He hushed her. Let me have a look at you. Naruto was painfully aware of what he'd done, and saving Kushina a second time, he'd unknowingly mirrored the actions of Uruke-sensei. But it was the truth. His mother was the Jinchuriki of the Kyuibai before him, she had already suffered torment before it was sealed inside her. He felt a touch of guilt, at feigning his death back there, but he'd had no choice. That Shuriken had been coated with poison, it'd take time and a sizable portion of Kurama's chakra to purge it from his system. But now he knew for certain. He need no longer ask Kushina Yuzumaki if she was currently the container of the Nine Tails. Now he knew. You saw that, huh? She seemed almost cheapish. I did. Naruto could already feel his back wound closing, evidently he'd retained his tenant's regenerative properties. His hand, however, proved to be another matter. He grabbed onto Kushina whilst she was wrapped up in Kurama's chakra, that one wouldn't be healing anytime soon. But that was neither here nor there. He'd expunged the poison from his system, he had to make certain Kushina been able to do the same. Slowly, so as not to startle before. Hold still. He placed a hand to her cheek, another to her shoulder, his palms radiating green light. You've been poisoned. I need to draw out the venom. Sakura had, at his insistence, taught him some of her medical ninjutsu. He absolutely edited it most of the time, and it drained his chakra like no tomorrow but he at least knew enough to safely neutralize foreign toxins. She squirmed once she saw the ravaged state of his hand but complied all the same. Do you hate me? She whispered as he tended her wounds. Her words were soft, forlorn. He would hate her, just like everyone else did. Everyone except Mikatone even she didn't know the truth. What's this all of a sudden? You saw it. Kushina pantomimed a gesture at her stomach, unable to quell the hopelessness starting to swell inside of her. What I have inside me. I'm a monster he she cried out in surprise as the Uchiha seized her by the shoulders and shook her roughly. His coal black eyes were dyed with chakra, flaring the distinctive crimson color of his clan. His chakra felt cold, like she was looking at someone else, staring into the eye of a complete and total stranger. His tamo entranced her, spiraling hypnotically before her face, little more than a blur before her eyes. He gripped her tighter still, shoved his visage dangerously close to hers. Never, he hissed, words rough with anger, call yourself that again. But I, never Naruto growled, his tone left no room for argument. Why the hell would I hate you for something you're not? At his words, Kushina felt herself begin to break, all the barriers she'd built in her mind come crashing down around her ears. When the tears came, she couldn't stop them. This was all too much. Too much to hope for, let alone dream. In the span of only a few hours her life had gone from a lonely little existence to this. This she hadn't expected anyone to look for her to begin with, let alone rescue her, and all because of her hated crimson hair. Aragadu, she whispered, hugging him tightly, burying her face in his in a vain effort to hide away her tears. Thank you so much, Naruto-kun. She felt the tension ease from his shoulders as she held him, felt him relax obeyed marginally into her arms. His heart thudded warmly against her ear, a soft, reassuring rhythm that promised her all would be all right. A sudden swirl of leaves broke that promise. Kushina felt words leave her as a young man of roughly fifteen years or so emerged from a body flicker. His shaggy blonde hair framed cold blue eyes, eyes that told the world he'd come here been expecting a fight. She felt her heart lurch at the realization. Minato had been following her, too. He'd come to save her. But he hadn't been expecting someone to beat him to the punch. To her, she watched the emotions flicker over his face. Confusion, suspicion, sadness, and danger. It was gone too quickly for her to tell. Kushina, I he paused as his eyes fell upon Naruto and her close proximity to him. His face fell. Uh, it seems I'm interrupting something. I can always come back later if you'd like. Minato she sputtered in surprise, scrambling to her feet. When did you? Naruto scrubbed his hand against shot eyes, silently fighting the urge to simply pass out. Because this had to be a dream. It must have been a dream. He had to forcefully slow his hammering heart. Both his mother and father were standing before him, arguing. It took everything he had not to embrace them on the spot. He chose to maintain his silence as the pair conversed, Kushina explaining all that happened between Naruto's arrival and Minato's. When she finished, he, I don't think we've met. His father smiled wanly, extending a hand. I'm Minato, Naruto. He clasped the youth's hand and shook, not trusting himself to give away his true surname, not at the moment. Uchiha Naruto. Uchiha. Minato's head tilted to the side slightly. I thought you looked familiar. Familiar. You must be mistaken. Naruto put on his best poker face. I've never seen you before in my life. No, I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before. Minato argued. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. Naruto emphasized with a shake of the head. Minato, will you stop arguing with him, Titebane? Kushina snapped at the both of them. Naruto can save my life so stop pestering him. Both boys bristled but for entirely different reasons. Though they each knew better than to risk the wrath of raging redhead, Minato seemed more hurt by it than anything else. Naruto simply sighed in disbelief. He was amazed with his own ability to keep a mostly straight face upon seeing his mother and father. 
If he hadn't met them previously in his mindscape, he probably would have been acting like total fanboy right at the moment. Thankfully he had grown up in leaps and bounds during the course of the war and knew how to keep a straight face when he really needed to. It was perhaps a bit easier to deal with than it would have been otherwise considering he was currently older than his future father and mother. Of course, his screwed up DNA probably kept them from recognizing the similarity, too. Shall we move on? He indicated the horizon, the sun was just now beginning to rise. It looks like we won't be getting much sleep after all. As they reached the gates Naruto Neri face bombed from frustration. The return trip had been fairly uneventful, therein lie the problem. He'd felt his father's eyes boring into his back for most of the way, and while the two of them remained pleasant with one another, he couldn't help but wonder if he'd done something to irk him. Tushina, on the other hand, practically glowed. She'd kept him occupied the entire length of their travels and such, proving a welcome distraction and conversation. It was almost like having a little sister. While he knew rescuing Kushina had been the right decision, he still wondered if he should have waited for his father or someone else to swoop in and save the day. He'd acted recklessly and without thinking, and possibly already altered events beyond his control. But no, his true frustration stemmed from the keen look both guards were giving him at the gate. Clearly they recognized Minato and Kushina, but Naruto not so much. And well within good reason. He'd been so wrapped up in his plans to change the future that he'd failed to recognize a fatal flaw in the present, Naruto did not exist in Kanoha. To make matters worse, he was still wearing his old Hishiate. If someone were to stop him and ask who he was, if someone did not recognize him, he was toast already. Kushina must have seen him squirm somehow, because he felt her gaze fall upon him. I didn't exactly have time to ask for permission when I went after you. He whispered, lying through his teeth and scrubbing at the back of his head with a hand. It was kind of a rush job. The Kanoich's cheeks promptly swelled a scintillating shade of scarlet. She stiffened her posture and flicked her eyes toward Naruto. She blinked. Oh, ha, if you keep saying things like that, I'm going to fall for you. Did you say something? And nothing Kushina spluttered. Nothing at all. You there the Ambu inclined its head curtly before him. Lord Hawkage wishes to speak with you regarding your retrieval of Yuzumaki Kushina. Also, Mikita-sama wishes me to inform you, she awaits your arrival at the earliest convenience. You are to come with us. Without another word, they turned and encircled him. Kushina searched for her rescuer's eyes, but they stared fixedly at the ground before them, like cold, sharp onyx. She felt her twist uncomfortably at the sight. Whatever the Ambu had said must have badly rattled. Mikita-sama. Naruto's first instinct was to decry the words, to deny that he was an Achiha. His second was to ask just who this Mikoto person was and what she wanted with him. His third and final decision was to take a deep breath and clear his mind, compose himself, and above all remain calm. Hopefully his presence in the past hadn't changed too much already. A. N. And there you have it Naruto finally sets foot in the village. However, the question remains, will he receive a warm welcome from the Uchiha? Or a cold one? To be honest, originally, I wanted T2 go a different route. With this, to have everyone in the village remember Naruto as an Uchiha, someone whom we know he is not. Then I realized that just wouldn't do at all. Naruto wants to be seen as himself, not someone he isn't. Pairing is still up in the air, but Makoto is most likely going to be involved, although I will gladly take any other recommendations that are offered. Kushin is falling for him but the question does remain, will Naruto ever reciprocate? Her feelings. I'm leaning toward yes in time I may even include Tsunade, seeing as how the age gap has shrunk to almost nothing now. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review would you kindly, and enjoy the preview it's a long debate this joint to don't consider it proof I fully intend to continue this story. Well, hello there handsome. Naruto opened his eyes and turned in the direction where the voice had come from, only to come face to face with possibly the most gorgeous girl he'd ever seen. He found himself peering into the coal black eyes of another. Acha, a lithe beauty with long, lustrous black hair and a body that, despite being clad in Kanohagakure fatigues, would have made even Tsunade Bachin green with envy. She smiled warmly and she strode to meet him, claiming the seat opposite him on the bar without so much as an invitation. There was a cool, aloof air about her, as though she existed solely to strike fear into the heart of others. He could appreciate that in a woman. Have we met? Naruto failed to bite back that inquiry before it could leave his lips. While he didn't know her, from her gaze, it was obvious the woman knew him. No, we haven't. The Kanoichi replied. But I'm sure Kushin has told you all about me. I'm Mikoto. Pity. She shrugged her shoulders. Father won't like that. But thanks, for whatever it's worth. Naruto almost barked out a laugh before he realized the repercussions of his actions. Instead of Minato saving his mother this time around, he'd been the one to do it. His actions weren't helping his case any he had to calm down and think things through rationally from here on out. The slightest action could have untold repercussions in the future. Mikoto a male voice exclaimed. What are you doing? His smile shattered on Mikoto's face like so much glass. Before Naruto could protest she looped an arm in his and drew dangerously close to him, bosom pressing into his arm. While he himself was sure no stranger to intimacy, he still felt a flush rise in his cheeks as she did this to him. He was, after all, only human. Let her play along. She hissed in his ear, mere moments before a stern-looking man appeared via Shuzen. What is the meaning of this, Mikoto? He demanded. 
What does it look like I'm doing, Fugaku? She smiled, scooting closer to Naruto. I thought I'd introduce myself to our long-lost clansmen. Naruto nearly dropped his chopsticks. He knew that name in his youth before the massacre, he'd gotten into enough trouble to learn it well, having often found himself before the man's desk to be brought to the clan Sokol Justice for his pranks. Just as he knew this man would someday be the father of Sasuke and Itachi. His left hand twitched with the sudden desire to kill this man. After what Sasuke had done, he'd be doing a world of good by ending his father's life. This fool, Fugaku scoffed. He's no kin of ours, he just walks in here and claims to be one of us for all we know he could be an enemy spy. Snick. He blinked in surprise as a thin red line opened across his cheek. Naruto retracted his hand, having been the one to throw the knife with deadly accuracy. Tear to run that by me again. Kami, I am so sick of him Mikoto groaned the moment he was out of earshot. All he does is prattle on like an idiot. He is an ass, isn't he? Naruto muttered into his drink. Mikoto shook her head, raven tresses swaying from side to side. That's not it I'm the representative of the whole clan. If the clan is in a bad position, I must protect it. I'm an only child and my father isn't getting any younger so the job of looking after the clan must be left to me my father. He's the supervisor of that job so that's probably why he pays so much attention to me. But with conversations between us alone today, when Adasen spoke with me, he spoke of you and what you did for Kushina. You were bold, reckless, not a thing like Fugaku, not even in the slightest and because of that I think he's a bit jealous of you, frankly. Naruto groaned. Well, isn't that just lovely? Katen. Fugaku snarled. Gaokaku no Jutsu. Naruto balked as the stream of fire gushed toward him. Unbidden the memory was there, hand signs and all. Naruto reeled as a wealth of information flooded his mind. It was as if every Jutsu Madara had ever seen, ever mastered, was now his own. And he knew just which one to use. Stealing himself, he drew in a deep breath, kneading the chakra in his stomach, giving it shape and form. If one wanted to extinguish a flame, they need only give rise to an even more powerful inferno, by which they might overwhelm and extinguish it. Fugaku must have sensed the sudden movement of chakra, because his eyes bulged. That's... Katen. Naruto spat. Dokamekiaku. He exhaled mightily, expelling all the chakra he'd been stoking in his lungs. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Naruto chanted the words like a mantra in his head as he drew nearer and nearer to the Hawkage's office, and Buana guard in tow. More like an escort. The old man probably didn't want him bolting the first chance he got. Naruto didn't blame them. After all, he had shown up with little Tono warning, rescued. Their Jinchuriki brought her back to the village, and then marched right in their front door. It certainly didn't help that he was dressed like a leaf shinobi. Kami, he was going to have fun explaining that one. Even more so his newfound appearance. On one hand, he could simply have them bring in a Yamanakawa's Anoichi around at this point to examine his mind and memories. On the other hand, Naruto wasn't all that certain he wanted to reveal whether he was from the future just yet. Already his presence here had fair reaching complications. He was painfully aware just how incredibly he might have ed things up between his parents by rescuing Kushina before Minato had a chance to intervene. But that was why he was here, wasn't it? To change things, prevent the future from ever coming to pass. Not if you erase yourself from existence in the process. Bakayiru's common sense smacked him upside the head. Naruto cringed at the thought. Although it also made him wonder. What would have happened if his mother and father never got together to begin with? Well, he wouldn't exist, for starters. And if he never existed, then Abido never attacked the leaf. And if Abido never attacked the leaf arg major headache Naruto frowned, his pace slowing almost imperceptibly as he mulled the matter over. His guards didn't like that. Not one bit. Keep moving, outsider. One of the Ambu elbowed him in the back, forcing him to keep up. Naruto bit back a growl and valiantly fought the urge to racing in the man and the rest of his squad into a nearby wall. Oh, and it would have been so easy, too, but if he pulled a stunt like that now, he was liable to get himself thrown out of the village before he even had a chance to explain why he was here. And just how am I going to explain that, anyway? He wondered. He did his best as they drew close, mentally preparing himself for what lay on the other side. No fainting. Check. No spazzing out. Check. Cold sweat. Check just as he was about to set foot into the office and prepare himself for the lie of a lifetime and possibly the most epic fail in existence he a cold hand settled upon his shoulder. Hold, Myrtle. The Uchiha nearly jumped out of his skin because there, hovering before him in the black, was a face he'd hoped to never, ever see again. The Shinigami. Naruto opened his mouth to voice a reply, only to realize the guards around him had ceased moving. Everything had ceased. Time itself had stopped, the colors of the world having faded to a grim black and white. They were alone, frozen here in this moment of time. Thousands of thoughts ricocheted in his mind. Countless words sought to leave his lips as those dread eyes peered out at him from within macabre grin. In the end he settled for one. You, the reaper inclined its head minutely. Well met, my emissary. That brought Naruto up short. Wait, what? He frowned, and not just at his newfound title. You still remember me. His reply was met with a frown and a snort. I am the god of death, boy. Did you not think I would leave you unsupervised when the fate of the entire world is at stake? Well, kinda. Snorting, the Shinigami shoot its head, even then those eerie eyes never left his, not even for a minute. I thought I ought to inform you of something before you continue on your quest. 
and before I speak, I should caution you, do not panic. It paused for a moment, and when it finally spoke, its response was stern, almost stoic in its reply. You as you know yourself has already ceased to exist. There was a silence. When Naruto didn't vanish from existence, a low growl left his lips. You wanna run that by me again, buddy? Silence the Reaper reprimanded, its tone strident. By altering your DNA, you no longer exist as Yuzumaki Naruto. Rather, you are an Uchiha. You already know this. What you do not know is thus, all traces of your former self were eradicated the moment I first laid my power upon you in limbo. Naruto blanched. He didn't like where this conversation was going. Please tell me that doesn't mean what I think it means. Shinigami nodded. The old you may yet still be born in this timeline, but any effect his existence might have had upon you has been nullified, my emissary. At Naruto's continued silence, the grim sighed. Perhaps I am over-explaining. Allow me to simplify. Say something foul were to befall Yuzumaki Kushina, that she were to die say, at the hands of an enemy shinobi. Were that to happen, even were your mother to perish, and those last traces of your old self eradicated, the you as you now know yourself would still continue on. To exist. Do you understand? He could feel a headache coming on, but the Yuzumaki turned Uchiha nodded anyway. Just what the hell did you do to me? Naruto hissed. Not just my face, not just my DNA, but even my destiny I barely recognize myself anymore. I made a wager against fate, I believe you mortals call it a gamble. The Reaper chortled then, it was a deep, throaty sound. You truly are a unique existence. Your mind and your memories belong to you still, but should another try to pry into those memories, and I suspect the fools of this era soon will. They will see what the you of this time has seen, false memories indistinguishable from a true experience, bequeathed to that body you now possess. You may wish to thank me for this gift, but know this those golden eyes semi to brighten at that moment, glowing with eerie intent as the death god loomed closer, its breath cold as ice upon his face. You must keep who you truly are, a secret. I shudder to think what might happen if the timeline comes unraveled any more than it already has. Are you sure I can't just kill myself and be done with it? The blonde growled, placing a hand to his now throbbing temple. It's beginning to sound a hell of a lot more simple. You will not the Shinigami's voice was like a thunderclap in his ears. I have not bargained my very being on this gamble only to have you end your life a second time. All right, all right, Naruto sighed. Loosen up and take a joke, will ya, Reaper? I do not loosen up in my business. He replied. Now, you are going to be questioned. Interrogated. No, really. His deadpan was airily concealed. Silence Shinigami snapped back. Now, listen well. This is what you are going to say. Naruto gulped as the Shinigami finished its explanation. That had to be the most head up lie ever. You do realize I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, right? I am well aware. The Reaper retorted as the colors of the world began to return, the flow of time moving inexorably ever onward. And I trust you to succeed. Before he could reply the Shinigami was gone, leaving him alone with his escort. Thankfully, neither seemed to have noticed the little time lapse. One of them shoved him towards the doors a tad too roughly, snickering as the blonde stumbled toward the office. He did his best to push all thoughts of revenge from his mind, refusing to show weakness in the face of these fools. Here goes nothing. Naruto tapped softly on the door with his fist and announced his presence. Come in. Tears nearly sprang to his eyes. Upon entering he found himself staring at a pair of familiar faces, lacking the liver spots of old age as well as stark gray hair, and another which he immediately recognized and gravitated towards. He would have recognized her anyway even without the Juan attire and Hishiate, even so he knew those yes, that hair that bust just about anywhere. Even so, his jaw nearly dropped to the floor. Botchin, W what did you just call me, punk? The young woman couldn't be more than twenty maybe twenty-five bristled angrily at his remark. Naruto had just enough time to register the remark before she cannoned forward, fingers clenched into a fist. Less than a day ago, that punch would have hit him. No Aizuchiya sang at the sight of her attack, at the sound of battle. She seemed to slow in his peripheral vision, as though she were moving underwater. He wasn't quite sure when he moved it or how for that matter only that he did, drifting forwards even as the door shattered to timbers behind his back. Kami, but she was so slow. Or was he simply faster now? Boy, whatever the case she proved no match for him, his fingers locked around her wrist in a vice and gave a sharp twist, breaking the bone like a twig. Snick she gasped in pain surprise but Naruto was still moving, sweeping her legs out from beneath, forcing her to the floor with a strength he didn't know he had. Even as she tried to struggle his fingers found her throat. Sunade froze, eyes bulging. Because this was Sunade, younger than he remembered her thighs was the past after all but still the future fifth Hawkage nonetheless. And he'd just beaten her in unarmed combat. It all happened so swiftly. Ah, realizing his mistake, he swiftly jerked backwards, leaving a baffled Sunade gopping up at him. My apologies. I tend to react like that when someone attacks me. Sorry about calling you that too, he continued, at the murderous glint in her gaze. Must have mistook you for someone else. He held out a hand for he and slowly, warily, she accepted it. I certainly hope so, Sunade said with eerie calm as she pressed a hand to her broken wrist, livid honey eyes bored into her future successor. Because whoever you are, if you ever say that to me again. No no Naruto waved his hands rapidly and performed a perfunctory bow. It was a mistake my bad. If you're quite done heronging him Sunade, Sarutobai's gravely voice interjected, I'd like to speak with our guest. 
alone. But Sensei, this missed. Sune looked as though she might say something else, might protest for a final time. But in the end, she resigned herself to a silent retreat ending to her battered arm as she departed. Naruto turned to regard the hawkage as his fellow blonde gave them their silence. He was acting rather strange. Funny, he didn't remember the old man being quite this stern back in the day. The thought brought a frown to his lips. Had he made yet another mistake already? You are Saruto by Haruzen, right? You would be correct. The Sandin replied, steepling his fingers together. The problem remains, however, that I do not know who you are. Let us begin with what we do know, then. His aging face seemed to tense as Naruto looked on, his old eyes turning harsh and stern. First, you retrieved Yuzumaki Kushina from enemy forces at great peril to yourself and returned her to this village, safe and sound. For this, you have my most sincere gratitude. Second, for some reason or another you're impersonating a Kanoha Shinobi, because I've never seen you before in my life. Third, judging by your appearance and that little stunt you just pulled back there with my student, you are undoubtedly an Uchiha which also strikes me as strange, because, for lack of a better term, you don't seem to have that proverbial stick up your ass. Have I missed anything? Nope. Naruto had to forcibly sink teeth into his lower lip to keep himself laughing at the last. I think you've just about covered everything and anything. Not quite. Sarutobai fixed him with a steely gaze. There is still the matter of who you are and what you want. Now, because you've chosen to be courteous to me, I shall extend the same courtesy to you. I will ask you one final time. Who are you? Naruto dithered a moment longer, wondering just how much he ought to reveal. He'd already altered events by saving his mother, who was to say what would happen if he revealed he was from the future. Slowly the Jounin opened his eyes, letting the gathered teardrops run down the side of his face towards his ears. Just what the hell was he going to do? Even if they did believe his story, there was no way in hell they'd accept his change in appearance. At the least, they'd throw him in a mental hospital. At worst, they'd condemn him to death. The Shinigami's explanation rang through his mind once more. This is what you are going to say. He felt his eyes begin to burn again. He knew what answer he had to give. Do you know the name Uchiha Madara? There was a silence. When the third next spoke, there was an audible edge to his words. Surely you're not claiming to be. P.S.H. Naruto snorted and waved the Sandim's concerns aside. There could be no taking his words back now, the only way out was forward. Of course I'm not Madara I'd have to be like a hundred years old much to his own consternation he steeled himself, drew a deep breath, and continued the lie, continued to weave this fine, delicate tapestry of falsehood. I'm his descendant. What? Did I stutter? Naruto forced a tough of arrogance into his voice easy enough when you knew someone like Sasukine watched the words work their magic. Achiha Madara is my grandfather. I am of his. Must I demonstrate myself further? Sarutobe paled and promptly crossed himself. Twice, Naruto watched a myriad of emotions flicker across his face. A descendant of that man, standing here before them. Now that he looked, the man did bear a passing resemblance to the legendary Achiha but no. That couldn't be possible. Nadara didn't have any descendants unless he'd fathered a child before being slain by Hashirama in the Valley of End. And if he had, if such a child had grown and produced yet another child. He slammed the lid shut on that train of thought before it could consume him. I'm afraid I'll need more proof than your word. See is believing, after all. Naruto sighed and released Chakra into his coal black ice awakening the line bestowed upon him. Sarutobai stiffened as the sharing and abruptly emerged its triple tamo swirling fiercely angrily in each eye. Naruto bit back a grimace of his own once he beheld his reflection in the Sandame's slate gray stare. Nadara's eyes were still evolving. Rapidly, would he unlock the main Jikayo at this rate, and lose his eyesight before he could accomplish his goal? He hoped not. Those eyes, hers invisibly swallowed, as though he'd seen something in them Naruto had not. 2C. Gathering himself up with an effort, he forced himself back to the table once more. Why have you come here then, after all this time? Surely you could have left Kushina at the gate I mean, at Naruto's thunderous expression he was quick to amend himself, you must have had a life outside these walls. My father recently passed on. Another lie. But before he did, he told me that all Echiha were welcome here, and as I find myself growing lonely, I decided to stay. Is that a problem? Not at all. Sarutobi seemed to welcome this change of topic with open arms. If you wish to come into the hidden leaf, that can be arranged. But on to other matters. Where did you get the headband? He asked. This. Naruto pretended to consider the Hishie for a moment. It was passed down to me. A trophy of sorts. I'll have to have someone validate that. A small smile etched across his visage, like a crack scrawling across stone. But if you're telling the truth, I'd be more than willing to welcome you into our village. He rose out of his chair and pulled up a seat. You may wish to make yourself comfortable then, stranger. You may be here quite a while. My name is Naruto. At last he thought to himself, some truth. Naruto, then. Sarutobai confirmed. I'll have someone come by to collect you shortly. As you wish. Naruto replied slowly, choosing his words with the utmost of care. Send a Yamanaka to pick my brain. I have nothing to hide. Some hours later, Naruto chewed on his bottom lip as he wandered through the streets of Kanoha. It had been a long time since he had been able to walk through the village like this, especially since it had first been destroyed back when he was 16. They had done a very good job rebuilding it, but it just hadn't been the same. Especially once it was destroyed the second time. Another thing that had slightly unnerved him at first was seeing so many Uchiha. 
He hadn't gotten around to figuring out how he would prevent the massacre yet, but it would still be years before that would happen, at the very least. On the other hand, that made it of utmost importance that he try to convince the Hawkage to get the Uchiha to merge with the village more than they currently were, lest they risked alienating themselves even further in the future. And then there was the matter of Tobai and Uchiha Madara, not to mention Ouch. Naruto touched a hand to his head and fought to keep from cringing. His head was still throbbing a side effect of having his memory so thoroughly inspected. As the Shinigami had said, that which was seen were not the memories of Yuzumaki Naruto, but Uchiha Naruto, who would have thought the god of death could do such a thing. Nodim it still riled him to be seen as an Uchiha, when at least on the inside remained an Yuzumaki. By Kami this was going to take some getting used to. Humming as he walked along, he got the occasional glance from villagers, some of whom would give him a small nod of acknowledgement and maybe a smile before continuing on their business. Others many of them Uchiha scowled at him, likely due to their inherent suspicion of Uchiha Madara. Now that he'd claimed to be the man's descendant, it was only natural that suspicion be abound. Yet another big difference, previously he was either completely ignored or treated like a celebrity, especially after Payne's attack. This right now was a happy, if not nice, medium. I guess I could get used to this. He rubbed at an itch on his arm, not used to having them sheathed in long sleeves like they currently were. The Hawkage had gotten him a small apartment to use in a few sets of standard John and clothing, along with a few sleeveless vests and the standard John and jacket. The outfit was similar to that which most ANBU wore, but he currently didn't have a mask or arm guards that lofty station was well beyond his reach at present, after all. He'd only just been allowed into the village after the Hawkage revealed him to half the damn populace, and he was fairly certain his goals didn't include joining the infamous Black Ops anytime soon. As for now, he'd be more than happy with a warm meal of ramen. The scent of it caught his nose, causing his head to snap back around. He spun about, seeking its source. There, standing in all its early glory, Hikaraku Ramen. One Maso Ramen, please it was all he could do to keep the grin from his face as he rushed inside and took a seat. All his strength was focused on preventing his knees from knocking together as he awaited his long-favored treat. The chef took his order and ducked back behind the curtain, leaving the Yuzumaka turned Uchiha to wait impatiently for his food. Seconds passed, then minutes. Finally, just as he was about to check on him, a voice prickled at his ear. Well, hello there handsome. Naruto opened his eyes and turned in the direction where the voice had come from, only to come face to face with possibly the most gorgeous girl he'd ever seen. He found himself peering into the coal black eyes of another Acha, a lithe beauty with long, lustrous black hair and a body that, despite being clad in Kanohagakure fatigues, would have made even Sune Bachin green with envy. She smiled warmly as she strode to meet him, claiming the seat opposite him on the bar without so much as an invitation. There was a cool, aloof air about her, as though she existed solely to strike fear into the heart of others. He could appreciate it, in a woman, but there was something about this one that instantly put him on guard. Dangerous. Have we met? Naruto failed to bite back that inquiry before it could leave his lips. While he didn't know her, from her gaze, it was obvious the woman knew him. No, we haven't. The Kanoichi replied. But I'm sure Kushin has told you all about me. I'm Mikoto. She continued, pausing, peering at him. I honestly have no idea who you are. Naruto shook his head. Pity. She rolled her shoulders. Father won't like that. But thanks for being polite, for whatever it's worth. That aside, I understand I have you to thank for saving my best friend earlier. Naruto almost barked out a laugh before he realized the repercussions of his actions. Instead of Minato saving his mother this time around, he'd been the one to do it. His actions weren't helping his case any he had to calm down and think things through rationally from here on out. The slightest action could have untold repercussions in the future. As a matter of fact, Mikoto a male voice exclaimed, cutting him off. There you are. The smile shattered on Mikoto's face like so much glass. Before Naruto could protest she looped an arm and as and drew dangerously close to him, bosom pressing into his arm. While he himself was sure no stranger to intimacy, he still felt a flush rise in his cheeks as she did this to him. He was, after all, only human, and those s pressing against him. Play along. She hissed in his ear, mere moments before a stern-looking man appeared via Shuzen. Once again, Naruto felt that faint sense of deja vu. He'd seen this man somewhere before. But where? What is the meaning of this, Mikoto? The man demanded. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, Fugaku? She smiled, scooting closer to Naruto. I thought I'd introduce myself to our long-lost clansmen. Naruto nearly dropped his chopsticks. He knew that name in his youth before the massacre, he'd gotten into enough trouble to learn it well, having often found himself before the man's desk to be brought to the clan's so-called justice for his pranks. Just as he knew this man would someday be the father of Sasuke and Itachi. His left hand twitched with the sudden desire to kill this man. After what Sasuke had done, he'd be doing a world of good by ending his father's life. This fool, Fugaku scoffed, scowling at Naruto. He's no kin of ours, regardless of what Lord Hawkage says. Anyone with dark hair and black eyes can waltz in here and claim to be one of us but what proof does he have I wonder. For all we know he could be an enemy spy. Snick. He blinked in surprise as a thin red line opened across his cheek, spilling crimson down his collar. Naruto retracted his hand back onto the counter, having been the one to throw the kin knife with deadly accuracy. 
His eyes narrowed upon Fugaku, his Sharingan must have activated somehow, because the man visibly flinched when he met his gaze. Care to run that by me again? He hissed. You don't frighten me, outsider. The Uchiha snapped back. And knock less like you is nothing. Knock less. Is that so? Naruto quipped, detaching himself from Makoto, swiveling to face the man. Then why does it look like you're about to piss your pants? He had the succinct satisfaction of hearing Makoto's laughter we did that sound bring such perverse pleasure to him anyway and his grin only grew as he beheld his adversary's reaction. Fugaku's face flared five different shades of red. Why you dare? Oh, I dare the former blonde was rising from his stool now, Ramen completely forgotten in the wake of his anger. What are you going to do about it, little man? Ah, the sweet irony of it all. As an adult, Naruto was a good head and shoulders taller than Fugaku, towering over him like a giant. To think he once feared this man in his youth there was nothing he could do to hurt him now, he was invincible. Untouchable. And if this belligerent fool thought he stood a chance in hell he'd probably try and. Training Ground 7. The words were little more than a snarl. This evening. With Mikita-sama as my witness I will prove just how worthless you are before the clan, worm. I'm shaking in my sandals. Naruto growled, knowing the man had just made a fatal mistake. With two another word, Fugaku rounded on his heel and vanished in a shushion. Kami, I am so sick of him Mikoto groaned the moment he was out of earshot. All he does is prattle on and preen like a complete idiot the clan this, the clan that he's not even the heir and he goes on about it more than I do for God's sake sigh. She pressed her head to the counter as though she could somehow bury her woes there. He is an ass, isn't he? Naruto muttered into his drink. Just like Sasuke, he added to himself. Mikoto shook her head at that, raven tresses swaying from side to side. That's not it I'm the representative of the whole clan. If the clan is in a bad position, I must protect it. I'm an only child and my father isn't getting any younger so the job of looking after the clan must be left to me. My father is the supervisor of that job so that's probably why he pays so much attention to me. But with conversations between us alone today, when Adasen spoke with me, he spoke of you and what you did for Kushina. You were bold, reckless, not a thing like Fugaku, not even in the slightest and because of that I think he's a bit jealous of you, frankly. Me, Mikoto nodded. A long-lost descendant of Uchiha Madaraha wouldn't be jealous of you. She nudged him playfully with her shoulder. So, are you going to accept his challenge? Naruto's frown flipped itself upside down. You bet your pretty little ass I am. Her onyx gaze pinioned him. You know it's a good thing you're cute. His grin was positively beatific. I try. Are you prepared, fool? Hi hi, I'm quite ready to kick your ass. Fugaku's expression turned murderous. You worm. Naruto stifled a yawn as his so-called rival spewed yet another vitriolic retort. This was getting old. When were they going to start? The sun was just beginning to settle in for the venting, casting their grounds in seven shades of flame. An unbidden breeze blew through his tattered black locks, stirring the dead leaves at his feet and wiping them up into a frenzy. He watched them blow away, fluttering across the horizon until even his newfound eyes could no longer track them. Reluctantly, he allowed his sight to track across the remainder of the clearing. Fugaku had been good on his word. There were at least several dozen clan members crowded into the training grounds, each eager to see him succeed or fail. The latter wouldn't be happen. He didn't recognize any of them but then again, he'd only ever really known Sasuke and Itachi. Mikoto, as heir to the clan, stood at the forefront with her father, a large, grizzled old man who looked as though he'd seen more than his fair share of missions in his time. But it was the former who stepped forward, took her place between them. She looked positively regal in her kimono fabric a dark shade of dusk almost as if she were in mourning. Her visage was anything but. She seemed almost pleased. Achiha Naruto. When she spoke her tone was solemn, bordering on reverent. Fugaku has challenged your claim as Achiha. Do you accept this challenge? Naruto grinned. Hell yes. He was going to enjoy this. A slight smile lifted her lips. Very well. Nodding, she turned to face the latter. Achiha Fugaku. Do you swear by the clan to fight with all your... Hi. He cut her off mid-sentence, already inhaling. Mikoto scowled and took a sharp step backwards, returning to her father's side. Then Bajin. Katen. Fugaku snarled, expelling a great stream of flame. Gaokaku no Jutsu. Naruto scoffed and made to move, instead he balked as a stream of fire gushed toward him we couldn't he move. Why? Ah, uh, unbidden the memory was there, hand signs and all. Naruto reeled as a wealth of information flooded his mind. It was as if every jutsu Madara had ever seen, ever mastered, was now his own. And he knew just which one to use. Stealing himself, he drew in a deep breath, kneading the chakra in his stomach, giving it shape and form. If one wanted to extinguish a flame they need only give rise to an even more powerful inferno, by which they might overwhelm and extinguish it. Fugaku must have sensed the sudden upswing of chakra because his eyes bulged. That's... Katen. Naruto spat, grinning from ear to ear. Doka Mekiaku. He exhaled mightily, expelling all the chakra he'd been stoking in his lungs. The great fire found itself snuffed out, easily extinguished before the rising inferno as it roiled forward. Into Fugaku. The elder Achiha had just enough time to realize his folly before the blaze overtook his position, swallowing him whole. Though his mind railed against this sudden turnabout, fought the realization, the knowledge that he had more than severely underestimated this newcomer, this descendant of Achiha Madara. Pain. Fugaku's last sight was of the torrent of flame rushing towards him, his last smell that of charred flesh, his own flesh. 
Then the black of unconsciousness took him. Well, can't say I didn't see this coming. These were Naruto's next words, accidentally spoken aloud as the clan carted away the charred corpse that had once belonged to the great, now very late Uchiha Fugaku. And even if he was somehow wrong if by some miracle the pile of smoking flesh wasn't a corpse, the man would likely never be a shinobi again. The Goka Mekikyu had done massive damage not just to the clearing but to the Bufoon's body. The arrogant Uchiha had been left sporting massive third-degree burns, one of his hands had all but burned to ash in the massive explosion. Not that he felt sorry for him, mind you. Far from it he was simply in awe of his own power. It was hard to believe that a single fire technique, even one of Madara's had done such a good job at wiping that smug smile of that prick's face. If Kirama was still with him, he was certain the old fox would be laughing all nine of his tails off. Even now, fire crews were still working to put out the blaze with water. Those few who had remained of the Uchiha gazed upon him with varying emotions of respect, awe, and in some cases even fear. As much as he might loathe to admit it, he'd just established a respected place for himself in the clan and quite possibly changed the future. As he tried to contain his trepidation at continuously changing the future, Makoto sidled up to him, appearing visibly pleased with the end result. Well done, she said, indicating the charred terrain within a glance. I wasn't aware you knew such an excellent technique, as expected of Madara's descendant. Her finger trailed across his cheek before he could think to stop it, tracing thin lines across his cheek where his whiskers once dwelt and pulling his face towards her own. You know when next she spoke, her lips brushed his outer ear, words warmer than her breath. I do believe I'm starting to fall for you more and more, Naruto-kun. She took him by the arm and began to lead him away from the others, deeper into the grounds. Odd, so how did it feel, obliterating him a single move? She asked at length. Don't lie, I saw your face back there, you enjoyed it. The former Yuzumaki opened his mouth to say reply and promptly snapped it shut as she stepped away, awaiting his reply. Suiria right, Naruto, just roll with it. It was easy. He feigned a small smile and typical Echiha arrogance. After all those years spent around Sasuke, it wasn't that hard. The fool wasn't even worthy of facing me. Truth be told, it was the great destroyer of flame was the only fire jutsu that held any sort of real significance to him. Madara had used it to nearly wipe out the Shinobi Alliance multiple times during the where it was only fitting that he use it for the use it toward the greater good to end their duel swiftly. He felt a brief pang of sorrow, suddenly realizing he just might have ended Attach's existence before it had ever begun. But that was what this was about no wasn't it. He was here to change this. Some of those changes might not be pleasant. And some of them might. The voice didn't belong to Kirama he realized it was his own subconscious, a whisper of desire as he glanced at the woman beside him, refusing to be denied. There was certainly something alluring about Achiha Makoto. She was bold, beautiful, and if her lips on his ear and her words were any suggestion, she was obviously attracted to him. He was no stranger to the female form but what to do. Decisions, decisions. The old man had informed him that he wouldn't be able to accept missions for at least a week while he was instated as a citizen of Kanoha, and it wasn't as though he'd be able to change anything just by sitting on his hands until such a time, so. Which reminds me, Naruto-kun. Hem, I have a favor to ask. Yeah, I want to fight me. Naruto had his head aside as Mikoto finished her explanation, restraining a pained grimace as his raven locks threatened to blot out his vision once again. Kami alive, but he wasn't used to have this much hair he'd have to cut it soon perhaps into his old hairstyle. Maintaining it in its present form was absolutely about the question, eerie resemblance to Uchiha Madara's side. He didn't necessarily enjoy being reminded of those old memories. The images of the madman cutting his friends and family down were still too fresh to endure. MMM. The Koto nodded, mistaking his silence for affirmation. Just a simple spar. No ninjutsu, or jinjutsu. Only our sharing an. Perhaps some kunai. I wish to see how your skill compares to mine. Once more, the time-traveling shinobi had to pause to consider the ramifications of his actions. Something about the way she'd said Spar set off alarm bells in his head really she couldn't be serious. After seeing what he'd done to Fugaku she wanted to face him herself. You'll have to forgive me lack of enthusiasm. Granted, she replied, raising her arms and settling into a stance. You don't strike me as the type to hurt someone without cause, I like that. So, why don't we sweeten the deal? That caught Naruto flat-footed, once again, and for the first time since meeting with Haruzen here in the past, he was truly at a loss for words. I beg your pardon. Nakoto's smile sent shivers down his spine. Say, if I win you'll spend the remainder of the day with me, you'll spend the night in my quarters and do whatever I ask until sunrise. Hoy, hoy, hoy. And if I win. The heiress's grin seemed to falter for an instant, as though she hadn't considered the possibility of her defeat. Then I'll be yours to do with as you please for the evening. Just like that. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. He didn't believe her for an instant, but something inside him stirred at the challenge. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're trying to get me in bed. Figure that out on your own, did you? Look, we barely even know each other. What's to know? Mikoto countered, folding both arms before her note and substantial bosom. I find you attractive. Don't you feel the same? It has nothing to do with whether you're related to Madara or not, I could care less about that. However what I do care about is your strength. 
You proved your power against Fugaku back there you're obviously more than a match for most of our clan. I dare say you'd even best my father and he's the clan head. As his heir, I wish to see your true capabilities firsthand for myself you do understand that, I trust. Yes, Naruto chose his words carefully, but I still fail to see why you want me so badly. In the face of his silence, she smiled. It seems forward, I know, but I have always known what I've wanted in life, ever since I was a little girl. Someone strong. A man who doesn't piss or preen over tradition. Someone willing to stand up for himself and what he believes in. She turned aside then, her eyes downcast. Until you came along, I was beginning to lose hope I'd never thought I would find someone like that. Unfortunately for you, and here she did raise her gaze eyes bright and determined. You've come into my life at the worst possible time and done exactly what I had hoped to daughter my entire clan on his head. I expect you to take responsibility for what you've done. And then, just as swiftly as her sharing and had shown itself, so to did it fade, those charcoal orbs unexpectedly softening. Do you not find me attractive? She asked, tucking an arm around her waist whilst she spoke. As a fellow Echiha. Oh dear God, she's adorable Naruto felt a trickle of trickle down his nose and promptly slapped himself. Just who the hell was he staring at here? Attach his mom, attach his mom, attach his mom I have to calm down before I go and do something stupid and yet. His mind was screaming at him, telling him that this was the woman responsible for giving birth to Itachi and Sasuke. By all rights they might not exist now after what he'd done to Fugaku, but a small part of him cried foul at the thought of eradicating Itachi from existence. He tried to shut down all thoughts of mutual attraction from his mind, but to no avail. They clung like a stain to his brain, resisting all attempts to be scrubbed off and clean. And as such, he wasn't quite ruining the next words that emerged from his mouth. Well, you're certainly not unattractive Jay these Uchiha really spoke their minds, didn't they? She wasn't anything like Itachi or Sasuke nothing at all he didn't remember either of them being like well. This he was swiftly losing himself, Naruto was, and their spar had yet to even begin. Well, when you put it that way. Again, she doved him, her body a light blur, ebony tresses streaming out behind her as she threw the first punch. His new eyes saw it coming a mile away, what they didn't see was her hand emerging from the pouch at her back blow had been a feint. Naruto's head snapped to the right, his mouth snapping shut with a harsh click as something screamed towards his face at breaknickel speed. He felt something catch between his teeth and only then did he realize he'd caught a kunai between his teeth. Makoto gave him no time to try and process his small victory however, her hand scything towards his neck in a devastating arc that, if successful, would surely leave an awful bruise if it connected. He'd learned since a young age to understimate the strength of an Uchiha, certainly not one in her prime. With a hiss his head arched backward, taking the kunai between his teeth and shooting it back at her with the sheer force of his tongue alone. A thin slice opened upon the older Achiha's cheek, earning him the briefest of surprised snarls. His hand snared her wrist in a vixious vice, biting down with enough force to shatter bone. This same technique had broken Tsunade's wrist hours before. Nakoto didn't even flinch. Naruto saw it then chakra circling in her veins, strengthening her body, granting her resilience momentarily surpassing his own strength. Not bad, she conceded. But, but, he challenged. But I can do better Makoto scissored her legs beneath him, depriving both of their balance. The Uzumaka turned Ucha had a heartbeat to realize just how much he was beginning to enjoy their little spar before that old instinct of his kicked in, sending his new body wearily into action. Sharing an eyes flared, he saw her heel come sweeping towards him an instant before Makoto began the motion. In the blink of an eye, he launched himself upright, planting his knee into her stomach. He braced himself then, readying for the counterattack. That never came. Makoto crumpled like a sack of potatoes, her body flopping like a wet noodle to the ground. Oh crap he'd underestimated his strength just what kind of awful power dwelt in this new body of his to fell someone with a single blow. Stooping to a knee, he began to check for a pulse, silently fearing the worse. He hadn't killed her, had he? A harsh cough from Makoto swiftly disabused him of such a notion. She was still breathing though stunned by the blow to her stomach all the same. Sorry, Naruto murmured. Guess I don't know my own strength. Impressive. She gasped up at him. Your strength exceeds everything I thought it would be. Truly. As promised, I. Nope. W what? I said no. Naruto felt he might be making the biggest blunder of his life, but still, he shook his head. Don't force yourself for the sake of your clan. I'd eat us that. More than anything, he hated it when people were lying to themselves. He wanted no part of this if the heiress didn't truly want him. And for a moment, he thought he'd been right. Makoto stared up at him for a long moment third arc eyes disbelieving her expression torn somewhere between anger and amused ire, as though she found this whole speech of his incredibly funny. A joke, even. Then she straightened albeit with some effort, refusing all attempts at a sentence. Whoever said I was forcing anything, fool. Her hands closed around his visage and drew him forward, their faces now centimeters apart. I wasn't lying when I said I wanted you. Huh. Makoto looked like she was going to say something else, but she didn't. Instead she smiled, leaned up, and at him. Naruto shivered, a small tremor of desire arcing up his spine. But desire wasn't enough to hold him to Mikoto no mat how much lust he might feel in that regard. 
It took a great deal of effort to break away, but he did just that, gasping slightly. We can't do this, he argued as she tugged him out of the sunlight and into the trees, but the words were without rancor. Oh, I think we can. She reached up, trailing her finger through his hair, stroking his scalp through the sea of ebony tresses. In fact, we're going to. Right here. Right now. There was just something about the way she said those words that stripped away his self-control. Gazing down at her, her eyes half-lidded, her fingers exploring every inch of him told Naruto all he needed to know. He'd been wrong. Makoto wasn't being forced into anything. She was doing this there was absolutely nothing H flitting across his frame. No, you don't understand. He was cut off as her mouth struck his, her lips connecting with his ferociously, her tongue probing against his. That did it. The last bastion of his self-control crumbled. A N, and there you have it Naruto finally sets foot in the village. It took me a damn long time to figure out how I wanted to present the Hawkage scene, and with this, I can say that I am finally at last satisfied. Poor Naruto though no one sees him for what he really is, and more and more he's losing pieces of himself. He remembers what he once was but more and more he's starting to see just how much a mess he's walked into. Herring is still up in the air, but Makoto is most likely going to be involved, although I will gladly take any other recommendations that are offered. Makoto's falling for him but the question does remain, will Naruto ever reciprocate her feelings? I'm leaning toward yes in time I may even include Tsunade, seeing as how the age gap has shrunk to almost nothing now. Nakab may have a slight lead, but the pairing it's still entirely up in the air vote review tell me what you want. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review would you kindly, and of course, enjoy the preview I know they may be a total tease, but hey, I live to serve. <laughs> Don't talk like that. Naruto shook his head. You're a hero of the village, after all. Kushina flushed. Hey a hero, what makes you say that? Because you're holding back the Kyuubai, preventing him from escaping. Naruto's dead pen was barely concealed. Isn't that obvious? Why should anyone mistreat you for your sacrifice? There was a silence. Why you? You're really trying to make me fall for you, aren't you? What? It seems you're having fun, partner. Naruto opened his eyes bristled, he knew that voice. It was his own, speaking to him for the first time since the falls of truth. You. I. It's me. He experienced a sudden flash of his darker half with its dark red eyes and bleak smile. Hey, relax, partner. Yami Naruto soothed, spreading his hands in a calming gesture. I'm not here to cause trouble if anything, I'm here to congratulate you betting two women at once hot damn. You're sending me where? I've already explained this twice to you, Naruto. Sarutobai's deadpan was barely concealed. Do you honestly expect a third? Yeah, because it'd make me feel all warm and cozy inside. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. And dear though he might have been with the sandim during his youth it was a man, not a boy who gazed upon the third now, through eyes unfettered by admiration and endearment. For as long as he could remember he'd wanted to wear that hat, sit in that seat. Losing a war had changed that. There were burdens with being in command, impossible decisions that no man should have to break. Some broke under the pressure, others bowed to it and let it pass them by. And still others bore up under the weight of that horrible burden, carrying it stoically all those days. To this day, he still wasn't entirely sure which of those three Sarutobai Hurusen had turned out to be. Granted, he understood exactly what the privileges, responsibilities of the office entailed, including authoritative process, and quite frankly, thought his first and possibly last assignment was complete bullshit. To send a newly integrated shinobi out into the field so soon was just asking for trouble. Especially if that ninja was an Achihe still galled him to say that supposedly descended from Madara himself. Very well. But this is the last time. Whatever you say, Hakage sama God, it was so weird to say that. The sand him sighed, the sound of a leader old and worn and yet he seemed oddly relaxed. Peaceful, even. Naruto couldn't tell. He'd never been good at reading the old man's moods when he was younger. Even with all these years of experience behind him, he still couldn't tell whether the old man he would always be seen that way in his eyes was pleased or pissed with him. Hell, that expression of his remained entirely the same as that day. The day he'd been slain. Naruto nearly blanked up right then and there, dear Kami alive, how was he going to prevent that? Granted the time of Haruzen's death would not be for many, many years till now but just the thought itself was enough to give him chills. That's right, he mused, Abido and Madara aren't the only threats here. I've got to worry about him as well. What a pain. If left unchecked, Orochimaru would leave the village and torment thousands of innocent souls. Not to mention all those he would kill. I won't let that happen, either. He reminded himself, forcibly resting his mind back to the present as the Hawkage finished his explanation. In short, you'll be part of a joint envoy to Sunagakir. Hers and explained for the third and final time. They've recently sighted Iwagakir scouts on their borders and tensions are high throughout the nation. As they are one of our only allies at present, I cannot stress the importance of this. They lack our military might, but many talented shinobi have recently come under their banner. He fixed Naruto with a pointed gaze, leaving the blonde wondering just what he'd meant by that. Is he implying I'd be better off there? What? Naruto blinked. Ara, it's nothing. Sarutobai waved his question away with his hand. I just it difficult to reconcile your actions with that of your ancestors given their semblance. Ah, so that's what it was. Wait, that was the absolute last thing he wanted as things stood. I have got to get this cut. The Blaquette growled, touching a hand to his spiky mane. 
I don't want anyone comparing me to him. And why not? Because I'm my own man. Yachia found himself glowering in more ways than one as he lowered his arm. I don't want to share the present with some Y ancestor. Well said. Now, as I was saying, you'll be departing tomorrow at daybreak for the sake of renewing our truce. This time, Naruto couldn't quite hold back his groan. Is there a problem? Need I remind you that I've only been here for two days. His voice held just a hint of exasperation when he spoke, a note of annoyance at his careful plan so callously disrupted. Three, if you count today. And here he'd been hoping to do some recon on the village, maybe ingratiate himself with the clans, possibly even improve his social standing, the better with which to guide future events. Being sent out as an envoy to another village wasn't exactly part of the plan. It certainly didn't help that he knew next to nothing about Sunagekir, save that Gara, and by definition, his mother and father, hailed from there. Wasn't her name Karare or something? He quietly filled that away for later use before speaking again. I thought I'd have at least a week to acclimate till you started sending me on missions, or something important. You've generated a lot of interest in the other nations. Hers and replied, steepling his fingers. As much as I would have liked to give you some time, I'm afraid that's no longer an option. Besides, and here the Sandame did smile, you're still wearing that old Hishiate, are you not? Naruto blanched, in all the chaos of his arrival, he simply hadn't bothered to remove the damned thing. Sentimental value and whatnot. Why you have me there? Precisely. The not quite old man answered, his grey gaze gravitating towards Naruto once more. As Sunagekir is our ally, I saw no reason to refuse their request. Unless you have a problem. Inwardly, Naruto blanched. Well, this certainly threw a wrench in his plans. But he couldn't object without sounding foolish, and he'd already resolved not to reveal that he was from the future. To say so now would ruin what little credibility he had already established within the village, not to mention end with him in irons. They'd think he was a crazy man and with the false memories of the Shinigami overlaying his own, there was no way for him to convince them otherwise. No choice but to bite the bullet on this one. No, I can't say that I do. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. I take it you're going to assign me an escort. My pupils will escort you, yes. Sarutobi replied. This is an errant mission, Naruto. As much as I might like to, I can't simply send you alone. He made no mention of the turmoil his obliteration of Fugaku had done to the village. They both knew that a message had been delivered, albeit unintentionally. To stand against Madara's descendant was to court death or worse. He wasn't certain if the man would ever wake from the coma the medics had found him in. For all intensive purposes the man's might might just be gone. So it's gonna be just me and the Sanin, palling around in the desert. Came the reply. Fu Wen. Naruto. The reborn Uchiha stopped short, humor falling to the wayside when heard that tone. The tone. It was the same one the old man had used to discipline him when he was six years old. Whatever he was about to say, it was completely, utterly serious. I suspect you already know this yourself but I'll should have you know that we are at war amongst the other major villages. Assassinations, power changing hands, that sort of thing is commonplace in this day and era. Sarutobi warned, his voice dreadfully soft. Iwa, Kumo, Kiri amongst others. I would greatly appreciate your discretion in this matter. Although it seemed but a trifling task for one such as yourself, I needn't remind you that the probability of encountering resistance is quite high. Afraid I'm going to burn a few bodies. Unless you've business with the clan heiress. Hers encountered slyly. Naruto froze. Saruto by knew. He didn't know how, but somehow, the old man knew. He knew he'd managed to land himself in trouble already. It didn't have anything to do with his afternoon tryst with Makoto thank Kami, save the sand aim and his crystal dam the two of them had managed to avoid detection, despite having blatant in the middle of the afternoon in an unguarded training ground no less. The Uchiha heiress had bid him adieu with a not so subtle promise to see him later. Thus, here he found himself, dancing on a razor's edge. To deny it would make him look bad in the eyes of the Uchiha not to mention Makoto herself, whom he rather fancied and likely eliminate the one ally he'd already gained. Preventing that massive massacre was high on his to-do list, enough to make the former blonde swallow his pride and relinquish the fact. How? It was not a question. I have my ways. Sarutobai's smile was that of a proud parent. Once more Naruto was reminded that the old man considered much of Kanoha to be his family. At Naruto's thunderous expression he was swift to raise his hands in deference. Make no mistake, I approve. It is good that you were able to integrate into your clan so seamlessly. Naruto anger dissolved when he saw that amused expression replaced by shock. The old fart had actually seen it happen and try as he might, he simply couldn't bring himself to be angry about it. In doing so, Sarutobai literally had him over a barrel. Fat ingenious bastard. A knock on the door interrupted his self-inflicted musings. Yes, come in. Sarutobai waved. Once more Naruto found himself stricken speechless by the trio that emerged. Soon eight he'd already seen, so her reappearance wasn't nearly as striking as before. But there's not a pace behind her. Hiroshin and he was a bit younger, without the lines in his face, but it was definite telling him he was alive almost every fiber of Naruto's being longed to leap across the room and gloom his sensei in a strong hug. That desire only intensified when Jureya grinned that wide grin of his and spoke. You called for us, old man. I'm not that old. Sarutobai's reaction had Naruto snickering, but his amusement was admittedly short-lived. 
because there was one other whom he'd failed to account for, one who just as swiftly made himself known, that oily slippery all voice sending a sharp spike of anger, fear through the warm fog of nostalgic euphoria that had enveloped him. Is this him, Sensei? Yes, this is the young man I spoke to you about. Interesting. The Uchi is sharing and activated almost on their own and he simultaneously fought down the urge to hiss as that golden gaze fell upon him. There he was. Naruto felt a cold chill shoot down his spine at the sight of Orochimaru, nearly grimacing at Sanin's pale, composed visage. Orochimaru had been somewhat ambivalent toward by the time war reached its climax. He'd even worked together once or twice but he trusted the slippery snake about as far as he could throw Gamabunta, which was about a foot or two. The man might not be evil yet, Mike, but that didn't make him any less dangerous. If anything, he was even more of a threat. Their brief alliance against Abido and Madara hadn't gone altogether well, ending with the Sanin's eventual death and Naruto's forced use of the Shinigami seal on Madara. Now here he was, starting. Now that he was an Acha, he'd no doubt whatsoever that the man would try and go after his eyes. Kyukikuku, why so serious? Orochimaru asked, laughing genially at sight of the Sharingan and killer intent. I mean you no harm. Lie lies 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 murderer betrayer oathbreaker. Naruto's left eye twitched, dangerously close to ending the man with one of his newly acquired techniques. It would be so easy Madara's eyes had revealed to him a great many jutsu. It made his own racing gin and racing shuriken variants a tiny drop in a very large ocean. An ocean he could now peer into at any time and summon forth almost any jutsu he wished. He could drown the man in water, bury him in mud, char his body to cinders, or even suffocate the air from his very lungs. And those were just the elemental ones of course, any such aggression so would result in an immediate attack from the three shinobi in the room, but still. I need to find a way to get rid of this guy without anyone noticing. An idea occurred to him just then. Orochimaru would be suffering a very unfortunate accident a few days from now. But until then would play nice. Sorry, he cracked, but I don't like guys. He had the sweet, sweet satisfaction of watching the man's pale visage turn ghost white. Sunaid frowned at the slight, opened her mouth to speak. Oh, calm down, grandma. Naruto waved her wrath away at a glance, quietly cursing himself for the slip-up. Let your boyfriend over there fight his own battles. Now, two-thirds of the Sanin were paler than bone itself. WWW why you little. We are not involved at all. The ha 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 jury is mad cackle lopped the legs off her reprimand with singular ease, the white head all but beside himself with laughter. Oh, that was a good one I like this guy he readily extended an arm toward Naruto, offering a rough palm for the younger man to clasp with a familiar ease. Nice Tomicha, kid on Juria. Hope we can get along. Same. He managed, shaking the hand of the man who would one day teach him so much, he couldn't resist getting a jibe in. Just be thankful I don't have a stick up my ass like the rest of my clan. His grin only grew as they shook. I'd heart it from Sarutobai, but you're really not like most Uchiha, are you? Nope. Naruto bit back a smile, seizing upon the chance to get to better know the man who had once taught him so much. Must be my perverted streak. A lie, technically. He hadn't discovered those urges until just before Sakura's death and shortly thereafter his own, but they'd set in firmly enough to make him wonder sometimes, had the legendary sage really rubbed off on him that badly. Hell, he'd even caught himself peeping a time or two then he'd found himself flung into the past and summarily Mikoto had stirred up those desires all over again. A gleam shone in the Sanin's eye. Is that so? You have no idea. Good to see you're getting along. Sarutobai smiled. You know your assignment. The four of you will leave for the border and make for Sunagakure immediately. I pray you succeed. A wave of the wrist summoned up a quartet of packs and another tossed them at them others in even fashion. Naruto wasted absolutely no time in checking the supplies, a cloak, canteens and interestingly enough in his case, a small tanto. A glance at the Sande merely confirmed his suspicions. Consider this your first official mission as a Kanoha Shinobi. The man replied, Do well, and I can guarantee you the rank of Jonin upon your return. Unless you'd rather join the ANBU. No 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 Naruto hastily replied, grimacing at the mention of the Black Ops. That summoned up another memory. Root. He'd have to weed them out in Danzo as well, lest their despicable deeds poison the whole of Kanoha as they had during his time. Jonin is just fine. I won't let you down. Unsheathing the blade he marveled at its calibrate almost reminded him of the weapon the legendary White Fang had wielded only its edge was pure obsidian, blacker than the night itself. Right Kakashi's old man was still around best to address that soon too, before the man ended up committing seppuku. Well, you're certainly eager, I'll give you that. Jury amused, before returning his attention to their leader. You can count on us old man, if worst comes to worst. And it won't Naruto added primly. We'll take care of him. Soon he'd finished, earning a frown from Juria. Like he said, we won't let you down. See that you don't. Steepling his fingers, the aging cage leaned forward to address the four of them. I cannot stress how important this is to the war effort. If our allies falter, then so too do we. I need to remind you that we rely almost entirely upon Suna for weapons now, do I? The tanto you're holding now, Naruto, is a gift from their finest blacksmiths. A small smile tugged upwards at his lips. They thought you might need some encouragement to venture out of the village. It is yours to keep. So villages are willing to bribe me to get my attention, eh? 
Naruto mused, as he gave his new toy a test swing silently filing away this tidbit for later. Not that he'd ever betray Kano, but a weapon like this would come in handy down the road. Madara had been known to the entire world, and thus the appearance of his descendant was naturally not a well-kept secret. It was no small surprise that others would try to seduce him away from his home, but if a paltry weapon was all they had to offer. Dismissed. Yes, sir. Sunade and Orochimaru saluted, Naruto's lackadaisical stance drawing looks of ire from them both as they departed. No funny business this time, Sunade warned with a growl almost before they even the exited the offs. I'm not in the mood for it. Naruto titled his head to the side, the universal way to Goha. But the Kanoichi only flushed ever darker, her eyes bright with anger. Says the girl who got knocked on her ass. The Sanin's face brightened with embarrassment. Juria snickered as they strode out into the street. I've never seen someone get under Tsunade's skin like that. I'll kill both of you. So where do you think of Kanoa so far? Tere asked, ignoring his teammates' vehement decree as they made their way through the market district. I mean, you've already taken the tour, but did anything stand out? Unbidden, Naruto recalled in fond memory, trying to waterwalk for the first time, encountering a white-haired stranger who claimed to be the great Juria or some such nonsense. Truly, that was the day the title Arosnin had been born. A small smile tugged at the edge of his mouth. Well, the hot springs are nice. Juria looked as though he'd just found a long-lost relative in the Ucha. My brother. Sunade groaned. If you two idiots are quite done. Hi hi, Naruto chortled happily. Is there something you'd like to say? An insult perhaps? Or would you like to try and punch? Me again. We all know how that worked out. The blonde only frowned. The three of us will be taking the lead. She informed him, her gaze strained to Orochimaru and then Jureya. You will provide provisional support. After all, we'd never hear the end of it from the Acha if we let their precious golden boy get hurt. I can handle myself. Right. Her deadpan was barely concealed. You got lucky the other day, punk. Try something like that again, and I'll snap your spine in half. Naruto couldn't help but whistle at that one. Sheesh, are you this violent with Dan? Who in the blue hell is that? Oops, evidently she hadn't met the love of her life yet. Well, that explains a lot. Better now mention Nuwaki. Look, you little shit, I don't what kind of games you're trying to play, or what you've been up to out there in the boonies, but... Naruto lets those jibes roll off him like water off a duck's back, knowing Tsunade's temper made it all too easy. She might have mellowed out by the time they'd met one another, but in that time, he'd almost forgotten just how vindictive she could be. Dealing with Tsunade as Hawkage was one thing tolerating the brazen blonde in her actual youth was ten times worse. On a hunch, it seemed like Tsunade was only telling half the story for being an envoy. Making herself stand apart from their group of four showed a more severe side that he'd thought she'd lacked as Hawkage, but one glance at her told him there seemed to be something more personal than dealing with a few scouts. Naruto threw out one piece of bait, looking to see if the blonde would bite. His father had been right about that much at least. You do not torment the helpless to assert a position of power. That was reprehensible in so many ways. Those who have power, however, know that was a different story. You wouldn't happen to have something against me, would you, Tsunachin? Tsunade's hazel eyes narrowed slightly. There's the bite. Yes, I have something against you. She rounded on him with such ferocity that he almost started. You're new, untested, untrained, and quite frankly I don't trust you. You've already proven your temper, insulted the two of us, and you're a pervert like Juria. So no, I don't think we'll be getting along anytime soon. Before the war, Naruto would have flinched if she'd rounded on him like that. Now, he didn't bat an eyelash. Hear that? He grinned at Juria. She thinks we're a couple of perverts. Ah, the Suntob Sanin laughed. I am no mere pervert. Nor am I Naruto returned with a grin. That's right. We are. Super perverts they chorused merrily, slinging an arm around each other's shoulders. There was a silence. And then, and then, let's go, Tsunade. Orochimaru sighed in disgust. Leave the fools to their delusions of grandeur. Hey hey, no need to be hasty. Naruto swung around to block their path in a simple shunshin. I don't really care about the snake bastard but if you hate me this much Tsunachin, why do you say to a little wager? You win, and I won't speak to you for the rest of my days. A simple contest, that's all. She paused, torn between ridding herself of the insufferable upstart and wondering what her end of the bargain would be. And if you win, then you have to at least make an effort to be nice. Naruto challenged, knowing it would grate her nerves to do such a thing. You know what I'm talking about, pleasant and such at least to get Tanomi before you start condemning me for sins that aren't mine. Sound fair. That's it. That's it. Naruto replied, knowing she was a legendary error. Shall we settle this, then? His foot struck down at the street, molding the earth into the form he so required. The pavement bent to his will, summoning forth a finely packed table of earthen clay and a pair of tiny hills upon. He moved to the nearby table and took his place on the crudely crafted chair beside it, earning a bemused chuckle from Juria and a quiet stare from Orochimaru. Genius that he was, the pale prodigy immediately realized what the Uchiha was uptoned. In his convoluted mind, he thought the Uchiha stood no chance, none at all. Sunade's strength was legendary, the man was a fool to challenge her he said as much, and Juria seemed to think so just as well, but he remained silent despite. Arm wrestle. Yup. Unless you're afraid. Veruto taunted. Tell you what, I won't even use my sharingan. Just brute strength. No two out of threes or anything. 
You pin me once and I give up, and vice versa. Soon Aid bristled. Oi, oi, is he serious? Quite. Naruto placed his arm on their impromptu little table and wiggled his fingers. Finally, Tsune did the same. You do realize you're going to lose, right? Hefwa the Uchiha laughed as he lit a cigar with one hand and tapped his sheathed tanto with the other, some of the other villagers curious as to what exactly the man was capable of doing. We'll see. Ready, ready, and go. To her credit, Tsune actually managed to budge him an inch or two. But Naruto already knew all her tells, just as he knew he had exactly three seconds to force that arm down before she snapped his in half. He was by no means stronger than Tsunade, but a year's worth of war had taught him to be clever. And so, before she could exert the full force of her considerable might, he swung out with his foot breaking her concentration just long enough all without so much as touching her. In that instant her grip instinctively slackened as she prepared to defend herself, and he put his superior speed to use. Slam! Juria and Orochimaru gopped as the back of Tsunade's arm struck the table with enough force to shatter it, leaving the smug Uchiha the proud victor. There was a silence, and then, and then, a glimmer of respect entered her eye. Yao bestered, but the words were without their usual rancor. How did you know that would work? Naruto waggled his eyebrows. A ninja must look beneath the beneath, Tsunachim. And in doing so, he just so happened to catch a streak of red amidst the crowd. Well now, he muttered, creating a shadow clone to pursue. What do we have here? Kashino was dejected. Nearly three days had passed since she'd seen Naruto, after the Uchiha had been whisked away to Kami knew where she'd hear precious little. Apparently he was the talk of the town, having nigh but easily maimed a fellow Uchiha in a duel of honor. That came as no surprise to her, having seen the man's techniques firsthand she knew he was more than a match for most shinobi. But where had he gone? Surely he hadn't gotten himself thrown out of the village for his actions. If so, she would have at least liked to say goodbye. When asked, Minato had expressed some relief odd, that the newcomer had vanished, stating that strangers like him couldn't be trusted during times of war. Kushina was certain there was more to the blonde's sudden animosity than that but she'd been shooed away before she could press the matter any further. Evidently the last Namikaze was hard at work on a new jutsu, and he didn't want anyone to lay eyes upon it until it had been completed. That left her search at a dead end. Almost, rumor had it that the Uchiha were preening him as a prime candidate for the next clan head, a position Naruto had ardently refused. Not every useful information, but important nonetheless. Beyond that she hadn't heard anything more about him. Supposedly he was the long-lost descendant of Uchiha Madara, a genius prodigy whose skill was unmatched. She tried asking Makoto about it but her friend had been awfully secretive about it, now that she was on a mission to Kamiknu where she had no way of asking her bestie about it any more than she could Naruto himself. So here she was confined to the village walls in no small part thanks to Kumo's kidnapping attempt, left to ponder what had become of her savior. Naturally she'd been drawn by the crowds to the marketplace, where some event or some such had just taken place. Dang it she'd just missed them someone claimed the legendary Tsunade had been beaten in an arm wrestling contest. By some wisecracking Uchiha no less there was no doubt in her mind who that could be, it must have been Naruto. Darn it she just missed him cursing herself for her slowness she kicked at a patch of dirt and started back the way she came completely unaware of the shadow she'd picked up. That was when she heard the voice. Oi, Kushinachin. The young redhead started at the mention of her name, alerted by the bemused, dulcet tones behind that voice. Her body whirled so fast she actually kicked up a small cloud of dust, bright eyes over large and wide as they beheld the one who had spoken. Naruto, yo. The Uchiha raised a hand and lazy greeting as he reached her. I was looking for ya. Every fiber of her being longed to swarm him, she only barely held herself in check. That was when she noticed his attire. The raven-haired man had outfitted himself for a long journey, a clear sign that he intended to travel great distances, and soon. Oh no, had he truly been exiled for his actions already? I'm not to press you or anything, but are you? Am I? Please don't leave your reddit at a bane. Naruto blinked, momentarily taken aback by those words. Kushina felt her face flare fire engine red, the back of her neck burning beneath the brand of his inquisitive gaze. There she'd said it an awful paw hung there between them for a long moment, the silence stretching on for what felt like a small eternity. Finally someone broke it. Leave, Naruto exclaimed aghast, his concern shattering like so much glass. What are you talking about? I've just been assigned a mission, is all he continued quietly, indicating his pack. It's a big one, too. Real hush-hush kind of stuff. Don't know when I'll be back. Though, relief flooded her every feature. He wasn't leaving well, he was, but at least he'd be coming back. Unless he got killed. But then if he got killed wouldn't he be? Eh, uh, arg, why is this so hard? Groaning, the redhead buried her face in both hands, trying and failing to stifle that that moved past her muffled lips. There's an old saying where I'm from, Naruto grinned. Even when a lion hunts a rabbit, he gives it his all. That's the kind of man I am. So even on a mission like this, I'm prepared to go all out. He, were you worried about me? Yes. Kushina couldn't help but smile at his attempt at levity. Despite that, Naruto frowned. I'll be fine. He reassured, mistaking her silence for anger. No, it's not that, it's just... Ah, uh, now it all made sense. She still felt indebted to him for saving her three days before. It was only natural that she want to learn more about him and, ordinarily, he would have had a problem with that. 
The only problem was this was his will, mother granted, he may or may not exist as an Uzumaki anymore, and his old self had yet to be born of but still. He was going to have to overcome that mindset if he planned to speak with her, let alone form any sort of friendship. Gods, why oh why was this so difficult she wasn't even his mother anymore sorta of, kinda maybe something like that. I'm nothing special, t -tabane. Don't talk like that. Naruto shook his head. You're a hero of the village, after all. Kashina flushed. Hey a hero, what makes you say that? Because you're holding back the Kyuubai, preventing him from escaping. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. Isn't that obvious? Why should anyone mistreat you for your sacrifice? I certainly won't. If you didn't take him into your own body, this entire village might not even exist anymore. In my eyes, that makes you a hero. Reaching down for her, he cupped her chin in hand, forcing the young Kanoichi to look him square in the eye. No matter what anyone says, that's where you are. You, Yuzumaki Kushina, are a hero. There was a silence. Slowly her face began to flush, not scarlet as before, but a rosy hue. Almost as if she'd been tickled pink. Why you? You're really trying to make me fall for you, aren't you? Eh? The, when it came, was completely and totally unexpected. One moment he'd been standing there, staring down at the girl how without his continued interference I might one day be his mother. The next, she stood on the tips of her toes and pressed her lips against his whiskered cheek. It was a fleeting, tantalizing touch, innocent and naivene that had him completely spellbound. Huh. So surprised was the shadow clone that it actually dispelled on contact, evaporating less than an instant after Kushina's lips touched his cheek. The young vixen left behind was baffled blinking in surprise as she realized the object of her affections had just vanished in a plume of smoke. She'd had a cage bunchin' but even so should actual accomplitel infinitely. Ed him. Oh dear. The actual Naruto blinked as the memories came back to him at the gate. Well, that was certainly interesting. A small, slightly dismayed smile leapt to his lips. He'd been ed by his own mother and to make matters worse, he'd actually enjoyed it him Yuzumaki Achiha Naruto had enjoyed being ed by his mother the very thought was as disturbing as it was erotic in so many ways. He barely fought down a urge to send another clone after his wildby parent. Are you that excited, kid? Juria asked aloud, mistaking the Achiha's smile for something else. Something like that? Yeah. It seems you're having fun, partner. Naruto opened his eyes and immediately bristled and recognized. He knew that voice, recognized it now. It was his own, his dark side speaking to him for the first time since the falls of truth. He hadn't heard him for ages now, with cure image done he simply hadn't expected to, either. To listen to it again, hear it speak to him again raw shivers shot up and down his spine. You, I, it's me. He experienced a sudden flash of his darker half with its dark red eyes and bleak smile. Missed you too. You saw never get the hell out of my. Relax, partner. Yami Naruto soothed, spreading his hands in a calming gesture. I'm not here to cause trouble if anything. I'm here to congratulate you betting two women at once hot damn that takes some doing. Even without my help didn't know you had it in you. For the record, I've only betted one the other oi. Don't put ideas like that in my head. Whatever you say, boss. A devilish laugh rebounded through the halls that were his mind, dying away almost immediately thereafter. I look forward to your future exploits. Blissfully unaware of the havoc raging inside the explon's head, Tsunade gave the order to open the gates. By the grace of Kami Naruto managed to wrest his attention away from the Daoma and return it onto those great mahogany doors as they ground themselves open. Kyukuku, Orochimaru murmured morosely. This should be interesting. Naruto frowned. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Yachiha murmured a bleak and quiet quote to himself as he strode out of Kanoha for what felt like the first time in a very long time. I will fear no evil for I am the shadow. The heavens shall tremble. You will rise nevermore. Where did that come from? Ju had an old saying of mine. Naruto's eyes gleamed menacingly. Says the good get their just rewards and the evil, wealthy get their just desserts. For him, Orochimaru couldn't die fast enough. Hey, and, and there you have it Naruto finally starts changing things en masse no one sees him for what he really is, and more and more he's losing pieces of himself. He remembers what he once was but more and more he's starting to see just how much a mess he's walked into. Pairing is still up in the air, but Makoto is most likely going to be involved, although I will gladly take any other recommendations that are offered. Kushin is falling for him but the question does remain, will Naruto ever reciprocate her feelings? I'm leaning toward yes in time I may even include Tsunade, seeing as how the age gap has shrunk to almost nothing now. Makoto may have a slight lead, but the pairing is still entirely up in the air vote review tell me what you want. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review would you kindly, and of course, enjoy the preview guess who pops up. Die. There was no time to decide, he could only save one. Not both. So he grabbed the girl instead of the boy and dove for cover. Then came the explosion. The Uchiha groaned as he dusted himself off, the grit and gravel of Sunagakure already etched into his uniform. A suicide bomber. Who the hell did that anymore? Still being the dirt and dust that had gotten into his immaculate uniform, the former Yuzumaki turned to face the girl he'd just rescued from certain death. The same could not be said of her companion however, without the flying thunder god Technicwekers this body of Heesh simply wasn't fast enough save both. Whomever that boy had been, he was dead now. Dead as dead could possibly be. Well, he muttered to himself, that could have gone off better. Agreed, Hikalog muttered beside him brushing herself off with a groan. 
Her scorch release had been key in diffusing the blast, though she was far too humble to ever admit it, though I had not expected him to detonate himself in such a spectacular fashion. Her hazel eyes quietly regarded the small crater that had once been the market district. It would have been far larger had she not managed to detonate some of those tags preemptorily. The Iwagaki assassin had only managed to take two lives instead of dozens. His own and that of a shinobi. Any injuries? He asked. Here, I can heal. Hakura started, brushing off his hand with a flush. I would rather you attend to. The Kanoichi beneath you, Acha. Weya. The teenager they'd rescued managed groaned, dusting herself off with a pained hiss. Why? Where she took one look at her companion's charred corpse and turned bone white. Oh my god. Hey, Naruto patted the girl's face back to him. He knew well enough that if he gave her a chance to stare over long at her comrade's corpse the poor girl would just break down. Don't look at him. Look at me. Are you all right? Are you injured? What's your name? The trick was to bombard them with so many questions that they didn't have time to think there would be time to grieve later. If there was even the slightest of possibilities that the attacker wasn't acting alone. Her voice was numb, though. Thankfully not with shock. Tarura. Rank. Chunin. Injuries. None. Right then, Karachin, I need you to focus. Can you stand? H. Hi. Naruto froze as he got. A good look at her. Realization swarming over him. Brown hair. Purple eyes. Merciful Kami above and Yami below. This was no mere Kanoichi in his arms. He'd just saved Gara's mother from certain death and if that boy with the gold dust was who he thought he was, then that blackened body had to be Gara's father. No other shinobi wielded such a technique and if they did, he didn't know of them. Meaning, ah, uh, yes. Truly, the land of wind was a sight to behold. It wasn't just the sand but the beauty of the horizon, watching the sunrise over the horizon. There was majesty here, even in this arid land that supposedly contained nothing but dust and death. One didn't have to look to appreciate this, it was all around them. Impossible to miss. Plain yes, but wonderful to look at. Temri had taken him out here a time or two, just before all hell broke loose. Funny how beautiful everything looked when the land wasn't pulverized into volcanic glass. Naruto couldn't help but marvel at the land as it flowed past them, an endless blur of sand dunes interposed by the occasional oasis or shrubbery. It was certainly beautiful, in its own rustic way. The last time they'd been in the land of wind he hadn't had time to take in the scenery. Back then he'd been focused on finding Gara, saving the then Kaiskage from certain death. How ironic, then, that this time their mission was not one of rescue but to maintain ties with the very village he called home. At least it would be, a few years down the road. And yet, this feels wrong. That's because it is Manda rumbled angrily, the deep baritone of his voice reverberating through his scaly hide to tickle the Uchiha's toes where they lay. To think that I, the mighty Manda, would reduce to ferrying you lot across the desert his voice was almost a petulant whine as he slithered onward. Just because you were attacked once well, that doesn't give you the right to summon me these last words being directed to the summoner in question, Orochimaru. Come now, Manda, the pale shinobi soothe as he did the violet scales of their mount, I've already promised you your fill of any enemies we encounter, of which we have seen none since those scouts who ambushed us weren't even worthy of being midnoon snacks the snake's forked tongue flitted furiously at the mention of said attackers, ground to gory smears on the sands behind them. Jury and Naruto shared an amused look, as they recalled, Orochimaru had summoned the boss snake simply to scare the piss out of the Iwagakir shinobi. And it would have worked too had not Manta decided to flatten them merely for being in his precincts. You couldn't scare someone when they were dead. Maybe you shouldn't have called him. Sunade shouted to make herself heard over the rushing wind of their passage. You know how temperamental he can be. Naruto seconded that motion. Yeah, I'm not too comfortable riding on the head of a vicious reptile that wants to eat me. It can't be helped. Orochimaru put in matter-of-factly. This is the only way to conserve our chakra. Jury's toad summons and Sunade's slugs would just dry out. Besides, no one would dare attack us with someone like him around. A wicked gleam entered his eye as he said this, confirming that at some point, enemy shinobi had in fact, dared to do such a thing. This time, Manda had made short work of them. It was one thing to fight against the lord of all serpents Naruto mused, having been one of the few to live to tell the tale. It was another thing entirely to have him on your side, however, and another still, to be riding on his head across a sea of sand. But to listen to him complain. Yeah yeah Scaleface, we heard you the first time. I've half a mind to just leave you here for that remark the king snake hissed, words slipping with his anger, tail thrashing in agitation. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Jirei replied with a grin. And why is that? Orochimaru. Oh my, it seems he doesn't intend to cooperate. The Suntobsanin sighed theatrically. Narutasan, if you would. Would what Manda immediately bristled, fearing the worst. Oh, you know what? Sunade grinned merrily. Orochimaru actually laughed at his summon's discomfort. Kyukikuku. The blackhead almost smiled at that. Almost, who knew the man had a sense of humor but he went along with it, if only out of boredom. Leaning forward, he activated his Sheringen, allowing their ride to witness those red orbs and triple Tamo, the latter spinning menacingly. Look into my eyes you are getting very sleepy. No 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 the snake boss immediately jerked his head from side to side, terrified by the mere sight of the legendary Dejutsu. There's no need for that. Fine, remind me to stay on your good side, kid. Juria snickered, penciling down a few notes on his pad. Wadi writing Naruto had a fair idea of what it was, but he asked anyway. 
Oh, this is Sundog teacher chortled softly, it's nothing. Just a novel I'm working on. Wouldn't happen to be called a cake of paradise now, would it? Naruto was suddenly looking over his shoulder, peering down at what had been written. Who told you Juria's reaction was nothing short of profound. The man looked as though he wanted to embrace, strange him at the same time it was Minato. Wasn't it it had to be that damn kid is he trying to ruin my life's work? Ma, ma, Naruto soothed the man's perverted rage with a wave of a hand. It wasn't the squirt. So weird to call his father that sharing it. Remember he tapped at his steward eyes the trio of Tamo spinning eerily. I can just read your pencil S. From there it was just a matter of piecing the letters together and wait a minute there was a long, pained silence as his brain caught up to what his eyes were seeing, and what he saw was not amusing. Why the hell is my name in there you just switched the letters around and isn't that Suna? SHH the whitehead practically swarmed the blackhead, clamping a hand over his mouth before he could finish that sentence. Do you want to die Naruto quietly considered what he'd seen her do to Jiraiya the last time he'd been caught peeping. It hadn't been pleasant. On second thought, perhaps silence was the best answer here. Why am I not surprised instead of attacking the pair, Tsunade simply yawned. Only you would write a novel like that, Juria. Libel the sage Delcared, shooting up again in outrage. That's right Naruto found himself unwittingly backing up his mentor. Don't step on a man's romance. A dangerous glint entered those hazel eyes. And what, pray tell, is so romantic about an Ekai novel? Both men paled. Ah ha ha, that is to say. Kukukuku, you really are two peas in a pod. Thanks for the distraction. Naruto heaved a sigh as he leaned back into the shade, trying to remind himself that man wasn't evil. Yet no, he chastised himself for the childish impulse. With the changes I've made he might never be. Once upon a time he had stood on the side of good, it was a series of unfortunate and disastrous events that had led to the man's fall and his subsequent betrayal of Kanoha. The first had been a lack of recognition, he'd felt that no one understood what he was trying to accomplish. More and more he'd felt himself growing apart from his comrades, lost in his pursuit of Jutsu. When someone put his name forward as a candidate for Hawkage he could only imagine the Sanin's relief. Bree. Then Minato had been chosen as Hawkage instead of him. It had been the straw that broke the camel's back. In hindsight, he almost felt bad for the man, if fate had her way he could have turned out the same. Having so many indignities heaped upon him could truly be trying at times. Being treated like a demon because of the Kyubai, no one respecting him, nobody teaching him anything until he'd saved their collective asses countless times wait a minute. Why was he trying to save Kanoha again? Because of your friends and family. Right, that. For once Naruto was grateful for Yami's interference. Sometimes a voice in one's head wasn't so bad after all. Oh, uh, uh, you do carry it. Ruthlessly suppressing his darker half, the blonde returned his attention to his fellow prodigy, resolving to at least make an effort. If the man could prove he had at least some small speck of goodness within him, then it might not be necessary to kill him off after all. Oh, he wouldn't hesitate if the time came. It was just that, were Kanoha to lose one of its most prestigious shinobi so early in the war, morale would suffer. His knowledge of the second shinobi war was admittedly spotty, only extending to what he remembered reading back in the academy. He knew that the war with Mist was currently ongoing and the aim would eventually get dragged into it but beyond that. Wait that's it. The proverbial light bulb went off in his head, an idea forming from that last thought. Tiergakure. They hadn't started their line purge yet. That didn't happen until just before the third shinobi war. Which meant, a number of powerful line clans Hakus for example were out there somewhere, just beginning to suffer persecution under their mad Mizugich. And that persecution presented an opportunity as did AIM, provided he was able to wheedle his way into tagging along on that mission. It would be difficult, but the chance of meeting Nagato, Yehiko and Conan was simply too good to pass up. Clever. Yami snickered and sensing his thought, worming out from under the mental stranglehold Naruto had him in. Pull something like that off, and you'll change a lot more than the outcome of this war. Naruto silently agreed, if those three were brought back to Kanoha instead of left behind, Akatsuki would never be born. No Akatsuki meant no biju hunting. No biju hunting no moons I plan. Easy there, Tiger already he was getting ahead of himself, his mind a whirl with the limitless possibilities this change could wreak. But for now he needed to focus on the task at hand, surviving this mission and making it to Jonan. Once he did, reluctantly, he struck up a conversation with his old nemesis. Sagat any students, or a Chimaru. Unsurprisingly, they got a rise out of the pale shinobi. As a matter of fact, yes. Golden eyes gleamed with intrigue, a rare smile pulling at his lips. Her name's Anko. A promising apprentice, that one. But what have you surely you must have students of your own out there in the world there somewhere almost immediately the Achiha recognized the question for what it was and attempt to probe him for more information. He smoothly deflected it with a shake of the head. Sneaky bugger would have to try harder than that if he wanted to learn his secrets. Really Juria asked, grateful for the distraction anything that kept Tsunade from snapping his spine like a stick was good in his book. Naruto shook his head for a second time. Nope. That was the truth of it, he'd never had a student of his own. Unless one counted the lessons he'd given Kanohemaru. I've been on my own for as long as I can remember. Never really occurred to me to teach anyone, you know. You do know if we pass this mission, you'll be assigned a squad of your own. Tsunade interrupted, as was often her want. 
Understand you'll be responsible for the safety of three brats. Think you can handle that? Hayachiya, there was no venom in her voice, just an idle question, and yet it chilled Naruto to his very soul. Though she'd since stopped hating him simply for who he was, those words of hers could easily cut to the bone when she wanted them to. He gulped, almost audibly. The thought hadn't even remotely occurred to him that he'd have a team. Can I just take one student like Arachi? The words were almost a plea. I'm not cut out to teach three kids, really I'm not. Kyukikuku, I'm afraid not, said Shinobi shook his head lightly, long, glossy hair swaying. We geniuses can only instruct one student at a time. Naruto hissed. You are Suo getting a thousand years of death for this but then he thought of something. You know what, you're right he grinned. Betcha Lil Anko grows up to be just like you, a genius without peer. I was thinking more along the lines of Batchet crazy, but there was no rancor behind that word. Tsunade and Juria smiled at the subtle jibe but ultimately it was Orochimaru who had the last laugh, literally. Not that unverving chuckle that so often set Naruto on edge during his youth, but a genuine sound of actual amusement. Whatever had made him into an old cruel codger in the future doubtlessly hadn't fully taken hold yet, you couldn't fake a laugh like that. Still snickering at the Hellraiser that little girl would undoubtedly grow up to be, Naruto turned his gaze to the desert once more. That was when he noticed something. Hey, is it just me, or are we slowing down? Indeed, Manda's almost frantic pace across the desert had slowed to a considerable crawl, much to the serpent's consternation. In fact, there hadn't been any sand for a while now, the storm having ceased during their discussion. Which meant that they'd either reach solid ground unlikely unless there was an oasis nearby, or that the ground had turned to clay at some point without their knowing. Such a thing was unheard of in this sweltering climate, as was the appearance of an entirely unexpected element. Mud. Manda's indolent cry of rage confirmed everyone's fears, his movement grinding to an abrupt halt as he found his many coils trapped in a swamp. In the middle of a desert, with no oasis for miles in either direction. The trap couldn't have been more obvious if there'd been a neon sign saying trap in bright. Bold lettering. Ah, Christ. Juria was already rising, pocketing his notepad. There's no way there'd be mud way out here in the desert. You know what that means, Sune cracked a knuckle. Orochimaru merely chuckled. Another ambush, him. Again. That was the only word Naruto got off before everything exploded. Looking back, he didn't know whether to give the explosion core of Iwagakure credit for surprising them, or lacing the ground with that many mines, the deadly ordnance culminating in a massive geyser of smoke and flame that seemingly slew the shinobi on the spot. Or so the enemy hoped. Perhaps it was the smoke and sand kicked up from the explosion. Perhaps it was because the group had been expecting such an attack the moment they'd set foot into wind country. Perhaps they'd even prepared for such an eventuality by summoning Manda in the first place. Whatever the case, they clearly underestimated Manda's skin. The moment Orochimaru had realized what was about to happen, he'd ordered his summon to coil around them, his massive hide weathering the punitive blasts with an eerie level of ease. Did we get them? An angry and very feminine growl deep inside the snack dashed those hopes. I'm going to kill them, Tsunade roared. Well, this is embarrassing. Juria murmured blackly. They almost got us there. I take it back, Naruto's muffled voice resounded from within the serpent's protective embrace. Snakes are awesome. Aren't they Orochimaru seconded merrily? Manda, if you would. The king of snakes hissed angrily in agreement, his jadden eyes fixed firmly on the fools who dared to scuff his hide with their Tanidoheim explosives. Still hissing, he reared back, disgorging the quartet he'd sheltered all this time. None of them looked pleased at having come so close to death. Prepare yourselves, pray. When those coils slithered open, some of the Iwashinobi actually sobbed in fear. Then all hell broke loose. Cage bunch in no jutsu. Naruto immediately flooded the area with clones sneering the baffled looks he received from his teammates. It was weird seeing so many Uchiha like that his efforts wiped away those looks however, as a horde of Iwashinobi erupted from beneath the loamy soil to engage them. Ah, but that was the beauty of the Sharingan. Of the 24 enemy ninja that arose to slay them, their number was almost immediately carved in half by the doppelgangers and their equally lethal reflexes. Another three instantly fell to Manda's writhing tail and two more were down by a wind jutsu who knew the old man had it and hinkered a sea of Juria. That left one to Tsunade, a devastating right hook shattering the jaw followed by the rest of a face-off the lone assassin who dared attack her. That left a paltry seven in attendance of the force that had intended to ambush and kill them. Far better odds for four elite ninja and a very angry snake. Naruto stiffened as he recognized one of them, a man whom he had personally never met before, but who had been described to him by Sai. A quiet shinobi who killed his enemies with a single punch blowing them apart with devastating detonations. He stood there at front of their little vanguard, eyes narrow and face grim. Naruto almost didn't recognize him without the telltale signs of the reanimation. But there could be no mistaking him. Gari, that earned him a frown. You know me, Uchiha the man's voice was like rough gravel scraping across the sands, hoarse and dry. All eyes turned to Naruto. Yeah, what's the deal Juria frowned. The silence of Tsunade and Orochimaru was telling. Shit his brain hissed. Why? Who in Kanoha doesn't know of you Naruto shot back, dipping into his faux persona of Uchiha arrogance with an ease so effortless it almost frightened him. 
Gari of the Blast release. You're something of a legend up in Earth Country, aren't you? They say you obliterated a mountain with one punch. That much was true, done a bit of reading back in the library when it became apparent that he might be facing old foes in this day and age. Never had he been so glad for books. I could say the same of you, the older man drawled, thumbing his chin. They say you're something of a living legend yourself. Nadara's descendant, right. You got me there. Naruto raised his hands and foe defeat. Since we both know each other so well, perhaps we can come to some sort of agreement. What are you suggesting? Walk away. What? No one has to die here today, Gari. Naruto repeated his warning, sharing and flaring menacingly. Walk away. We can go our separate ways and forget this shit ever happened. He had no stomach for any more violence today, that he could avoid pissing off Iwa this Gekyur early on then he had a much better chance of making peace later on. If you attack us now, you'll just die with the rest of your men. I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of pointless deaths. So walk away. Like you let my men walk away did he mean the scouts from before, or the men they'd just slain it didn't matter. They attacked us first. He said, wasn't my call. Thari's frown deepened. And this is. Naruto glared why red daggers at Sunade and Orochimaru, daring either to object. Surprisingly, neither did. Juria had a contemplative smile on his face as though he were secretly enjoying the whole thing. Why bastard probably was and why the hell was he taking notes suppressing his ever-present temper, the former blonde turned his attention back to the Iwa Shinobi. It is. He nodded at last. To his credit, the man actually looked as though he was considering the offer. Then he frowned. As tempting as your offer is, I'm afraid I'll have to refuse. On what grounds? On the grounds that the Tsuchikage wants you dead. He pantomimed a gesture at Naruto and in that same instant, a black blur flashed out of his sleeve. Naruto narrowly recognized the Shuriken for what it was before he caught it in his teeth. God, that never got old. The looks on their faces were always the same how the hell did he do that as much as Naruto hated having a dejutsu, he had to admit that it was unbelievably useful when it came to dodging enemy projectiles. Wealth it's not fair at all. Gari groaned, realizing his preemptive strike had failed utterly. Sorry, Naruto grinned around the deadly star spitting it out not a moment later. We don't give a. Hear that, Juria were so important, they want us dead he laughed blithely to himself, idly unaware that this would soon become a common occurrence for their little group. Well, we are pretty famous. Orochimaru chuckled and tucked a hand through the ebony curtain of his hair, uncaring as Manda disappeared in a plume of smoke. Indeed, you guys really know how to treat a girl. Sunade covered her mouth and siftled a smile of her own, not one to rise above such petty mockery. So I guess you're gonna try to kill us now Naruto had his head aside, masking the regrets he felt at ending so many lives. It was a shame, really. Sparing Gari would have been a powerful gesture of his mercy back in Earth Country. I, well, couldn't win him all. Gari took one look at the ease with which they accepted his aggression and frowned. Perhaps this was a mistake after all. But, he had his orders. The risk of someone like Tsunade merging with the Acha was too great a threat to be brokered. Any child produced from such a union would be horrendously strong. It wasn't anything personal really. Just a matter of business. In any case, his objective was clear. Eliminate the Acha and or the Senju before that could happen. Their Tsuchikage would have had him kill both, but the captain knew he'd only have one shot at this. But although he and his men held the advantage barely in terms of numbers, they clearly stood in the shallow end of the pool when it came to raw talent. Here he was was, about to face down three shinobi who would one day be known as the Sanin and an Uchiha capable of unquantified levels of destruction. It would be no mean feat for him to kill one or the other, not with two of Kanoha's best standing at their backs. His chances of survival were slim at best and non-existent if he failed in his task. Honestly, that was almost enough to make him reconsider the man's offer and return home with his head intact. Troublesome. As if that word was the linchpin, the enemy shinobi swarmed forward at the others. But not Gari, he made a beeline right for Naruto the Blackhead blanched, barely managing to shout a warning over the chaos. Whatever you do, don't let him touch you. That was all he had time for before the man closed with him and they engaged in a blistering barrage of teijutsu. It was easily apparent he intended to make this a close-range fight. Refusing to accommodate him, or risk contact with the enemy shinobi, Naruto blurred backwards, eyes pinwheeling wildly to watch his adversary's movements for an opening. It wasn't easy. Gari was a good deal faster than what he remembered, precising him relentlessly, refusing to allow him even a moment's rest to use ninjutsu, it was all he could do to stay out of the man's exceptionally long arms. Arching backwards, he silently swore when the man tried to clobber his head off. He knew even the lightest contact could be deadly with what little chakra Kurama had left him it was very likely that any explosion could be fatal. He wasn't willing to risk regenerating an arm or anything major. If this man injured him, it would likely permanent even with Tsunade's aid. Of course, he didn't need both hands to call upon the vast repetoire of ninjutsu that was his own. As a matter of fact, one technique sprang to his mind just now. Sutan Mizurapa. Gari hadn't been expecting an Uchiha to suddenly spit water at him. One moment he'd been trying to land a telling blow, the next a terrific impact slammed into him and bowled him head over heels. He wouldn't realize what had happened until it was too late, by then his adversary had the distance needed to launch another assault. He flung a palm forward, an invisible current leaping forward to violently swat the larger man from his feet. 
Futon, Rapusho. Battered by the sudden surge of wind, Gari found himself bowled over, tumbling head over heels across the sands. As luck would have it, he toppled to a halt directly next to his mission objective. The man almost could not believe his luck the Uchiha's attack had left him lying at the feet of a very surprised Tsunade, the blonde having only just finished off one of his men. Chance. He lunged upward. Got you. Tsunade made the mistake of trying to finish him, then, striking at the man's unprotected flank with a brutal right haymaker. Naruto shouted a warning, but it was already too late to intervene. In a move that shouldn't have been possible, Gari twisted aside and snaged her wrist, stopping her assault cold, her knuckles just brushing the bridge of his nose. Juria froze. Naruto froze. Even Orochimaru made a sound of dismay, unable to believe that someone of Tsunade's level had been stopped. Gari could have blown her arm off right then and there. But he didn't. Too late, Naruto realized exactly what he intended to do. He darted forward, but the way was suddenly barred by two enemy shinobi. Don't. Sorry. Gari murmured contritely, his brow hardening in concentration. Bakuten. He said nothing more as he simply drove his fist into the blonde's stomach, the blow detonating explosively and throwing her backwards. Any other shinobi would have been obliterated on the spot, but Tsunade merely had a gaping hole where her midsection should have been. Fatal. Deadly. Mortal. No one could recover from a wound like that. Not even Tsunade. Dead. Gone. Deceased. These three words flicked through Naruto's mind, like the embers of a dying flame. He saw red. Great, unholy red. Countless memories of her in his youth flitted through the fog of his mind, good and bad times both shattered by her passing. She'd been with still one of his precious people. No amount of time travel could change that, not in his mind. But now Tsunade was dead. And it was his fault. He'd killed her. She was dead because of him. He might not have dealt the telling blow but there was on his hands. It was all his fault. His fault. His fault. All. His. Fault. His fault. A lone tear of trailed down out of Naruto's right eye, followed soon by his left, a slow trickle that stung every so slightly as he blinked the red tears away. Something stirred inside of him as he laid eyes upon Gari in that moment. Something dark, bleak, ancient, and so very angry. A power he had dreaded touching awakening from the moment he'd awoke in this body. But now it was there, free, alive within him. He could feel the tendrils of black chakra writhing behind his eyelids, eager and waiting to lash out at their master's preordained target. Infuriated, Naruto gave them that target. Hamadarasu. Black flames burst into existence upon Gari's right arm, staggering him. He was screaming almost before he even knew what was truly happening to him, unknowing of the horrors that had just awoken within the new Uchiha. One moment Tsunade of the Senju was falling away from him in a broken heap and the next the sleeve of his right arm was burning and scalding the skin beneath. He tried to smother them with an earth jutsu but they just burned even brighter, spreading from arm to shoulder then to his, slowly roasting his entire body despite his efforts to temper the intangible inferno. It burned oh sweet Kami did it burn he called for his subordinates. They didn't answer. None of that mattered now, he had to find a way to get rid of this hellish fire before before before. Badump. When he looked up the Uchiha was all but towering him, white eyes boring holes into his flesh, through his very soul. He stood stark against the sun eyes form little more than a shadow. Except for the eyes. Those eerie awful eyes. There was no mercy to be found in those sinister scarlet orbs, not a single sliver of decency to which he could appeal. Should have taken the offer. But the realization came too late the chances of Naruto being merciful after the death of his teammate were non-existent. He was going to die, Gari realized, and there was not a damn thing he could do to stop it. And then his world was gone. His perception was trapped by those spinning Tamo, all control severed from his body in an instant. For perhaps the very first time in his life Gari felt experience fear outside the precincts of the Sandam Tsuchikic. This man wasn't a man at all he was a monster still his body burned, but even that failed to hold a candle to the cold pit of dread opening in his stomach. His would-be killer said only one word then, and it was a word that promised complete and utter pain. Sukayomi. Gari opened his mouth to say something, anything, before this devil of a man ended him. All he managed was a wet-sounding gurgle as his world fell away. The world of red skies and black water opened up beneath him a heartbeat later but when he looked back the Uchiha wasn't alone. Rather, there were more of him. Dozens, no, hundreds. He was beginning to think that he should have ended them first doubtlessly whatever he'd done had stripped away the last vestige of honor in the man. Because each of those clones bore a weapon and he wasn't liking where this was going. Where am I he demanded to know. What have you done to me? I tried to be civil. The Uchiha whispered, his words a breathless hiss, as though he were barely reining his anger in. Tried to let you walk away. And this is the thanks I get you should have run. Run while you had the chance. Fool. Stupid stupid fool. That was when the first of many kunai descended from on high, pinning him to a cross that hadn't been there before yet now suddenly was. Gari tried to move, to break free, but found himself inexplicably bound, his hands and feet crucified by the deadly knives. Naruto advanced upon him then, and his silent army moved with him. Oh don't worry, he began almost amiably, the sudden mood swing causing Gari to start, I won't let you die. Yet, first, you get to suffer. Gari cried out in pain and yet the assault continued, extending in a series of slashing stabs designed to inflict maximum misery and suffering. Once, two, three, or was it more six too many to count? 
Over and over and over they fell upon him, an endless cycle that took his arms, his legs, eyes and organs, eviscerating him in every way possible leaving him on the edge of death. Still this torment continued, extending from hours to days and days to weeks, and weeks to months for years and years and years. Just like that he was back in his body again, the Jinjutsu having ended. The Uchiha still stood proud and tall over him, utterly unfazed by the mental slaughter he'd inflicted on the lesser shinobi. Poor Gara was not so fortunate in that regard, he could barely string so much as two thoughts together now, let alone speak. Glassy eyes stared up at his tormentor, having years of torment in as little as ten seconds. He was broken now in every sense of the word, assuming he somehow survived this encounter, he'd never be a shinobi again. Jury whistled softly at the sight. That was the Magikaio, wasn't it he'd heard of such things, but to see the legendary black fire firsthand was something else entirely. The kid wasn't even looking at him anymore and the body was still burning. Naruto nodded mutely. He didn't want these eyes he'd never wanted them as if sensing the man's distress, the white head turned aside. Good, he muttered, cringing at Tsunade's still form. Hope you made the bastard suffer. Orochimaru felt a small smile tug at his lips. Such prowess. You should kill him, Naruto-kun. He suggested. Naruto said nothing as he stared down at Tsunade's killer. Then the black tanto bit into his neck and he knew nothing more. The cut was swift and merciful. Gari what little remained of him was dead almost before his gopping visage even struck the ground. Death was a mercy for him, after what he'd been through. Now ordinarily, the loss of their leader and the awakening of a Mangekaio sharing and would have galvanized the remaining ninja to retreat, especially after what just occurred. But instead of doing just that, the remaining enemy shinobi weaved through a rapid series of signs and disappeared, their forms rippling away into the earth. That was when the mud came to life around them, swelling up in the facade of a dozen upon dozens of mud and earthen clones, each a perfect duplicate of the originals. Each bore a weapon hardened of rock, be it sai or sword or kunai, each equally deadly in their own right. They would rather die with weapons in their hand than risk the wrath of their Tsuchikich. Well, damn. Juria muttered, drawing a kunai of his own. That's not fair at all. Move. His warning came just in time as each of his clones, many having survived thus far drew breath, kneading chakra in their stomachs and exhaling in the next instant. So much for subtlety. Dakakyu no jutsu the ensuing fire that followed was nothing short of massive. Ineffective, several of the bunch and outright disintegrated upon contact with the roiling inferno. Turned out a few of them weren't clones after all, screams of pains resounded through the inferno only to be cut off just as quickly. By the time it had cleared only a handful were remaining, evidence of a single controller, rather than several. That made things easier, especially with Manda's absence. Much easier. Watch where your aiming jury is shot berated him, the words fell on deaf ears as Naruto threw himself back into the fray. He spotted one of the supposed clones and swarmed him with Teijutsu. He didn't care whether the man had a sword that it was drawn and ready. He was too filled with rage. Pain slashed across his right arm almost immediately as man got a lucky slash and but he pushed past it, grabbing the blade with his wounded hand and jerking it aside to open the way for a kunai. The man went down with a wet gurgle, eyes rolling back within his skull as the Uchiha overwhelmed him, striking with a well-placed knife to the head. There was no, wait just a minute the Uchiha said in angst, watching as his opponent crumbled to loamy soil before his eyes. His eyes widened, realizing he'd lost sight of the real foe. Naruto immediately spun towards Orochimaru and Juria, both of them occupied fighting the other clones of the shinobi. The other two copies, seemingly aware of the imminent escape plan, noticed Naruto right away. Oi, he's escaping he hurriedly yelled, trying to find the original amidst the horde of bunshin that had arose. But there was too much chakra strewn across the battlefield and the enemy had hidden himself well. Blast it, the bugger was going to get away. No, he isn't. A hard crack snarled through the air, accompanied by a bonchling scream of pain. Abruptly the clones dropped, deprived of the chakra controlling them. The boys blinked, turning their attention to the source of the sound, towards a woman they had believed to be dead. Naruto gopped, his clones vanishing with a resound poof of smoke. But though how the hell was that possible? Batter it and just a touch white Tsunade Senji held aloft her prize, a stout-looking man bearing the crest of Iwagekir upon his tattered hishiate. Her grin was nothing short of beatific, as though she'd just won a poker tournament rather than secure an enemy shinobi. It certainly didn't help that the man was clutching at his no-bleeding genitals in obvious pain. The three males shuddered in silent sympathy to the castration the fool had suffered, each knowing it could easily have been one of them. How in the hell are you alive? Jury gawped. What, you thought I was dead? The blonde drawled, thumbing her forehead. Please did you forget about my seal? Naruto couldn't help but gulp at the sight, both that of the now neutered man and the marks reading the one who had made him a nutch. In his anger he'd completely forgotten about her yin seal, recovering from a wound like that was nothing for someone like her. That didn't stop him from striding forward, and it certainly didn't deter him from doing perhaps the most reckless thing in his life. Without even thinking of his action or her potentially violent reaction he stepped up, swatted the man's broken body out of her grasp and embraced her. You reckless idiot. Immediately she stiffened against him, but it was shock not anger that stilled her body. 
What the hell was going on here were those tears in his eyes they were she'd only been down for a few seconds did he really think she'd been and even so, what was with this reaction they'd only known each other for a few days. And here washiging her Naruto couldn't see her face with his chin over her shoulder had he been able to do so he would have witnessed the impossible. Tsunade's face burning bright than the Tsuna sun overhead. Yeah what? Don't ever do that again Naruto pulled back to arm's length, her flesh fading as those still scarlet orbs bored holes into her unbidden, her heart skipped a beat. They were quite different from what she remembered, preserving the trio of Tamo after a fashion, now trio of circles rimmed by three bars, as if they'd undergone an evolution of some sort. Even as she looked on they faded, turning onyx once more. He shook her then, an irritated growl leaping from his throat to drag her back to the present. Do you hear me? Tsunade another shake. Never again. But, ever the sheer vehemence of his statement took her aback. Tsunade had never been shouted at like this before not since her genin days with Sarutabai sensei and even then she usually did most of the shouting having a man yell back at her, profess genuine concern over her well-being well, that was a new one. She didn't know how to react, or even what to say. Few had dared stand up to her since she'd acquired her monstrous strength. Those that had were still nursing bruises. For this Uchi and Naruto Somion she barely knew, to demand she not risk herself in battle was so ludicrous she'd literally been stricken speechless. She felt like a frightened genin beneath his gaze, nervous and skittish courage all but deserting her as she stared into the dark depths of those angry eyes. It waste her fying. To her infinite surprise, she demurred. Hi, Yosh. Just like that the fierce expression was gone from his visage, leaving him patting her firmly on the shoulder like a proud parent. I'll hold you to that, Tsunachin. Somehow, she couldn't find it within herself to protest the suffix. Perhaps it was for the best. She had no way of knowing what the moment would lead to in the near future, nor the chaos that it would cause. For a seed of doubt had already been planted in the back of her mind, and soon it would take root. Naruto had been concerned about her. More than just the concern of one teammate to another. If the two of you are quite done, you may wish to check his eyes. Orochimaru interrupted. Tsune jerked back as if she'd been burned. What about them? He awakened the main Jikaiyo at the time of your death and used it most strenuously. The prodigy put in primly. It would be wise to make sure his vision hasn't deteriorated. You should have seen him. Jury is seconded with the slightest of smiles. The second you went down he went ape shit on the guy. Naruto hissed, mildly offended. Traitors, both of you we agreed not to talk about that. To her surprise, the two men had the decency to look contrite. We thought she should know. Orochimaru returned, looking slightly hurt. Wow, was that even possible? Yeah kid, she deserves to know. Juria added. Tsunade's gaze snapped back to him, hazel eyes pinying the Acha. Her grandfather had beaten everything about the sharing in into her brain. She was one of the few who knew its secrets, such as the fact that one only awakened the Manjikaya when someone dear to them perished or they killed their best friend. Clearly, Naruto hadn't done the latter. Which meant, is this true her voice was dangerously flat. Naruto almost quailed at the sound of it. Yeah, well, I thought you were you know. Let me see. Her inner medic taking over, Tsunade reached for his visage. Naruto immediately flinched aside. Boy, stop squirming, you big baby. Naruto grunted as she seized his face and hand, his sharing and flaring unconscious lie. She tilted his head side to side, inspecting them. The crimson orbs followed her every movement, those barred eyes regarding her just a touch too closely for her liking. They'd stopped bleeding she realized, trying to look at it from a clinical point of view. To do anything else would allow her to think, to realize the awful truth. He activated them because of me. He's going to go blind because of me. Because of Medown girl we are not going there not with a man you barely know. A hot flush crept up the back of her neck that had nothing to do with the Suna heat. She stubbornly pushed the thought away and addressed him. Any pain in your eyes? No. Naruto admitted. Blindness. Nope. Dimness of vision. Nada. Wait a minute. Naruto actually paused at that, his bemused smile fading. Was it possible that he already had the eternal Manjikaiyo sharing and this was Madara after all and these were his eyes? If they were already eternal, then their problem was solved. The fear of a loss of vision was virtually non-existent. But how could he be certain the only way to do that was to use the Manjikaiyo over and over again? Yet in doing so, he might draw suspicion to himself, make others wonder why he wasn't losing his vision. This boded some thinking. Later. Not now. Ruthlessly, he put his mind back on track. Fair enough. But if you ever shake me like that again her expression was nothing short of thunderous. Naruto laughed merrily. Eh <laughs> hi were really scary sometimes, Tsunachin. A sly, knowing smile tugged at the blonde's lips. What? Don't tell me or are you afraid of a little aggression, Naruto-kun? Not at all unless Orochimaru would like to volunteer. The prodigy suddenly turned about three shades of white. No need for that. Just like that, the balance was restored between them, the moment of tenderness gone, but not forgotten. Tsunade would never forget. She filed that look away in the safe that was her mind, locking it away until those charcoal orbs reflected such concern for her again. As far as she knew, they wouldn't. But, that brief moment of dominance on his part had sparked something in her. He'd shouted her down, demanded that she not risk her life unless it was absolutely necessary. Yes, his comments had incensed her, and yet sentiment touched her. Naruto would have laughed again, but everything was suddenly blurry. 
It wasn't his eyes. He simply felt dizzy when the hell had he sat down. Why was he covered and why couldn't he move his arm? Belatedly, he realized what was happening. His body was going into shock. But from what he hadn't even been injured that bah. Oh shit, Sunaid was suddenly at his side, her anger forgotten. Your arm you're bleeding, ah. Uh, ah, uh, tis just a flesh wound, Naruto tried to reassure her, but found the words slurring between his teeth. Was this what it felt like to be injured to not regenerate? He knew that it was Shinobi had cut his arm, but with that anger at the time of the adrenaline simply hadn't paid any attention to it until now. Apparently he'd been cut deeper than he'd thought. Baka, it was like being chided by Secure all over again, except this time it was the master instead of the student admonishing him for pushing himself too hard and ignoring his injuries. Was that a touch of fear in those hazel orbs? No, surely not. This version of Tsunade would never be afraid for him. He must be imagining things. Stay still, she hissed. You've lost a lot of and the muscle is damaged. Tisking, she pressed a check recovered hand to the wound. I can repair the latter but y'all have to take it easy until your body can replace what you've lost. That means no more Mangekyo for the next 24 hours. Yes, mom. That earned him a swift swat on the head. Call me that again and I'll knock your block off. Don't look now, Juria murmured, but we've got company. Naruto's head turned to find a lone shinobi striding through the sandstorm. Another enemy his fears were only slightly allayed when he saw the headband. Suna. He was from Shuna. The barely even of age, dark eyes wide beneath a mop of pale russet hair. Thus the color of gold itself seemed to swirl around him, a silent shield protecting the youth from the harsh elements. A moment of terse silence passed between the five of them each waiting for the other to speak. Surprisingly the boy was the first to comply, his voice little more than a dry rasp, though whether from lack of water or simple surprise, they knew not. He looked just as surprised to see them as they were him, however. You're the envoy, I trust. The welcome they received at Sunakure was surprisingly quiet, if not simple in Naruto's mind. A sandstorm had blown up shortly before their arrival so perhaps that explained why there was no fanfare to welcome the four of their arrival, no trumpeting of horns or banging of drums for which the envoy might be heralded. Only a smattering of what probably passed for Suna Anbu and what he assumed was a village council were there to greet the Yanan at the gate and even then they seemed more somber than excited to greet their guests. In their clothes, Naruto almost balked at the thick garments they wore, swaddled as they were from head to toe in thick clothing to keep out the elements. It almost made him feel underdressed in his shinobi fatigues and cloak. Granted, he had seen similar garb in Suna before, but this was bordered on outright extreme. Only the Anbu in their sand-colored uniforms were any such exception, and their masked faces betrayed absolutely nothing. A mere handful shinobi probably were not dressed so, but his eyes ghosted over and failed to recognize any of them. Greetings. One of the women bowed lower, her face creasing in what Naruto hoped was a genuine expression. I am Chiyo of the Sand. We welcome you to Suna. Her gaze strayed to the boy who'd found them back in the desert and a frown formed. Hirosama, you were told not to venture out alone. I was bored. The redhead demurred with shrug. Besides, I was rather curious to see these vagabonds for myself. That is no way to treat our guests. Another shrug from their escort. Naruto's mind, however, was elsewhere. The woman's name hadn't been lost on him, not in the slightest. Grandma Chiyo. It took every fiber of his being not to start in surprise. Shia was young a good deal younger than he remembered her to be. Well, damn. Now that he looked at her he could kinda see the resemblance. But to see an old face like that, someone who he knew was dead, yet in this time alive and well it was just a little bit chilling. Oh, right manners. He really needed to work on that. Or you could butcher them. Yami interjected snidely. Just saying. It is our honor to be here amongst the sands. Naruto ignored and returned with the traditional Sunabo, something Sunade had all but beaten into him before that set out why. A murmur of surprise rippled through a few of the elders, passing through the congregation like an unseen wave, an Uchiha with manners. No less Naruto held the bow a touch longer than was strictly necessary, essentially showing that he was deferring to their leadership for the duration of their stay. An Uchiha with honor. Hiro murmured beside, bemused. I wasn't aware such a thing existed. Yami growled. Just one kill, partner pretty please. Naruto's only response was a kindly smile. You'll find I'm not as uptight as the rest, Hirosen. No kidding. Sunaid muttered, a touch of her old bitterness seeping through the smile she wore. A grimace, once more reminded of the arrogance of Mikoto's clan. His clan. It was going to be an uphill battle undoing the damage they'd done to their own reputation. Naruto only hoped he was equal to the task that had been set before him. He felt himself up to it, but only time would tell. It would be here he decided, that he would make the world realize not all Uchiha had a stick up their ass. Still he smiled, and if Hiro scoffed back for it. The rest wore smiles that looked as though they'd been painted on, their eyes hard with the hardship they'd suffered in the last month. Many of them looked outright leery of the newcomers. Not that he blamed them in the least for their caution. The way into the village was through a passage that cut between some very tall, very crooked cliffs, and at the entrance of this passage a small gate opened to admit their passage. A pair of ambu passed to allow them their admittance, but their stiff posture belied their tension. He'd no doubt they wore smiles like they had two electrodes attached to their cheeks beneath those faces, but while their mask leers may have passed over Jurya and the others, it was Naruto they fixed their sights on. They were ushered inside. To their infinite surprise they were each assigned an individual guide. 
one by one Orochimaru, Juria, and finally Tsunade were led aside, until only Naruto remained. Honest to meet you. His gaze fell upon Hiro, half expecting the boy to lead him onward. When he did not, Naruto frowned. Still in the spirit of friendship and cooperation not matter how much he might dislike this little shit he extended a hand to the younger boy. Hiro regarded his palm as though it were a poisonous adler. For the first time, an actual emotion crossed his visage. Not anger but rage. A hatred so vile Naruto nearly recoiled from it. Now he didn't claim to know what the kid's issues were, but he'd have to work to curb that temper of his, else he'd make more enemies than friends in his short lifetime. As if the future Keisuke's would deign to escort you. He stormed past without another word, leaving Naruto under the watchful gaze of the Anbu. Uchihasen. He turned, seeking the voice. Yes, one of the masked shinobi suddenly pulled off her facade, drawing aside the likeness of a scorpion to expose her visage to him. Then she reached down and began to remove her uniform in the same instance. Naruto's heart nearly skipped a beat. Oi, I like where this is going. Oi. He promptly found himself caught in the gaze of a green-haired Kanoichi with sunset-colored bangs, her heart-shaped face framed by a slight smile, above which eyes of the brightest hazel shone. Her attire was all but functional, not practical in combat giving him the sense that she dressed this way simply to gain attention. Or, someone had ordered her to, he suspected. She sauntered up to him with an almost deceptive ease, those full hips swaying with each step. There was a sureness to her movements he realized, a grace most Kanoichi, even Mikoto herself, lacked. She was upon him almost before he knew what was happening, not bothering to ask permission for the intrusion of his personal space. Greetings, she replied stoically, her head inclining in the slightest of bows. My name is Pakura. I am to be your guide for the duration of your stay, Achihasen. Juria looked as though he were about to protest we did Naruto get the hot Kanoichi guy but a withering look on Tsunade's part silenced the self-proclaimed pervert. An ordinary Achiha would have rebuffed her formalities with a casual HN. But then again, Naruto wasn't your typical Achiha now, was he to the disbelief of nearly everyone present he did the one thing that no one expected him to do. He reached out and took Pekura's hand to his own, lightly pressing his lips against the back of her palm. Dang it. There was a shocked silence amidst both parties. Such a thing was unheard of behind him, Tsunade's visage colored in surprise. She didn't think the Achiha had a romantic bone in his body. Just call me Naruto, he replied, dark eyes meeting her own. As allies we needn't stand on formality. Her full lips curled in the smallest of smiles. I shall remember that, Narutasen. She turned then, regarding the dumbstruck Sanon with something eerily akin to bemusement. Your escort shall direct you to your rooms, honorable shinobi. She said, turning away from them immediately thereafter, as though the trio were but a mere afterthought in her mind. In the meantime, Narutadono, I would be more than happy to bring you to. Wait, Sune protested, shouldering her way to the front of the group once more. Where are you taking him? Why to sign the treaty of course? Pakura said as though it were the most obvious thing in the world. Our lord's sole stipulation was that he meet with Narutadono as soon as he arrived so that they might discuss the terms of our agreement in greater detail. Surely your hawkage informed you of this Naruto felt the hackles on the back of his neck begin to rise with those words. The old man hadn't mentioned anything like that in the brief. Something wasn't right here, were they planning to get him alone and kill him? Sunade's expression was telling, evidently she shared the same thought. In that case we'll come with you. Jurei was quick to interject, trying to preserve the suddenly fragile peace between the two shinobi. We'd be more than happy to meet him. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. The Kanoichi returned with a shake of the head. He wished to meet with the Acha alone. Why came the demand? There are sensitive matters he wished to discuss. Nothing more. Surely you aren't reneging on our alliance over so simple a term. Now see here you little. It's fine Naruto interjected, drawn alarmed looks from everyone. It's fine. He repeated, softly now. If the Sandim wants to speak with me alone, then that's what he'll get. He didn't mention that this felt a great deal like a trap, that his every sense screamed at him to get the hell out of here. But he was used to danger, becoming a political hostage however brief flight didn't ruffle him in the slightest. His body might want to be far, far away from here, but his mind knew that this charade was entirely necessary. So glad someone sees reason. Takura purred, pleased. Shall we go then? We shall. Naruto deferred to her with a wave of the hand. Please, lead the way. In the instant as his head turned, Naruto activated the main Jukaiyo Sharingan and locked eyes with Tsunade. He could have done so with anyone, but since she was still relatively close, she would have to do. The blonde of course startled as he pierced her mind, alarmed to suddenly find herself trapped in the world of Tsukayomi. There was no torment or torture to greet her here however, only a sin sentence awaited her arrival in the warping world of Jinjutsu, spoken so swiftly she almost wasn't able to read them. If I don't return in three hours take the others and get the hell out of here. Just like that she was back in the world again, her body slicked with a cold sweat. Naruto's words stood out in quiet confidence as he turned his head back around, the Manjikaio fading from his orbs. That idiot he was going to get himself killed she was certain of it and all out of some misbegotten sense to keep the peace. No, nah. before Tsune could protest further, she found the Acha bought a flickered away in a swirl of sand. If there was one thing Naruto would take away from his stay in Sungakir besides her stoic beauty it was thus. Sand. The damn stuff was absolutely everywhere. 
In his face, his hairdom that he'd forgotten to cut that bristling beneath his sandals and stinging at his skin and getting S.D. cuck in his clothes. If it weren't for the veil he'd been given, it surely would have found its way into his eyes as well. That would have stung the newly awakened orb something fierce, he was certain. But ultimately his thoughts were not with the sand kicked up by the wind of the storm but rather with his comrades. Had they gotten his message? Would they even listen to it? No need to be nervous. Pakura reassured him as she ushered him inside a grand building that had to be the man's residence. I am told Lord Kaskage merely wishes to speak with you. Nothing more. Why does that not make me feel any better? Well shit, for once we agree. There was an awkward silence between the two halves of his psyche. I won't say anything if you don't. Agreed. A lone seat was waiting for them when they arrived and in it, a man in the unmistakable white-blue robes of a cage. Case cage sama Hekura genuflected, but did not otherwise move from her place at Naruto's side. The Achiha is here, as per your request. Face consumed by the shadows of his wide-brimmed hat, the case cage acknowledged his presence by raising one elegant hand, never once turning in their direction. He was not so much an honored guest perhaps, as a mild irritance to be endured, but at least the case cage didn't glare at him like the Ambu had. If anything, the man seemed to be measuring him, gauging him for any sign of weakness. Abruptly, he laughed aloud. It was a deep, throaty sound that instantly set Naruto on edge. We meet at last. His voice was low yet pleasant, exuding strength and charisma from every pore. I've heard a great deal about you, Achan Naruto. The latter bowed. You do me honor, Keisuke sama Please, what are formalities amongst equals? The man tilted his head, exposing sand-colored eyes set within a scarred yet still youthful face. He might have even been handsome, once. You may address me by my given name, by all means. Please, call me Keizama. Very well, Keizamasen. The man's brow tightened slightly at the mentioned ter suffix, only to soften seconds later. I understand we have you to thank for eliminating the scouts on our border. There was a rather baffling man amongst them. Gari of the explosive release, I believe. We dispatched an enemy platoon led by him, yes, thank you. Naruto had never been particularly good at verbal sparring. He much rather preferred to let his fists do the talking. But that simply wasn't an option here if he slugged a case cage for asking odd questions he was likely to remove Kanoha's only ally in this war. On the contrary, it is I who should be thanking you. A tiny smile broke out on the man's chiseled face, like a crack etching along a stone surface. Thanks to your noble efforts we will be able to duplicate the explosive release for ourselves someday. Together, we will dash our enemies against the borders. Naruto felt a cold chill creep over him the idea of that line in anyone's hands was a frightful thing. Tsunade had been lucky thanks to her seal. Other shinobi wouldn't be. But enough about this tedious war. The man miraculously withdrew a bottle and pair of glasses from the folds of his robe, filling both to the brim. Let us drink. To our alliance. Naruto arched an eyebrow in shock. The man liked his drink. We haven't even discussed the treaty yet. He frowned, accepting one for the sake of saving face. Ah, straight to the formalities Keizama smiled mildly. I was hoping to save the most bitter course for last. He let the words hang over them as he drank first, doubtless to convince the Ucha that he hadn't called him here just to poison him. Naruto sniffed subtly, his enhanced senses detecting no trace of poison. He'd heard the unspoken threat in those words. We will discuss it when I am ready. Not before. Like so many others, the Keisuke wanted to know if he truly was a descendant of Uchiha Madara, not some impious impostor rising to claim such a prestigious title. I suppose we could. Reluctantly he drank, wincing as the sake burned down his throat. If the man really had tried to poison him then he'd be in for an unpleasant surprise. Sakura had taught him how to burn away all but the most potent of toxins with chakra. And with Naruto's reserves, bolstered still by the flagging remnants of Kurama's chakra, even the most deadly of venom couldn't inspire more than a mild headache in him. The secret was best served after all, if it remained a secret. Excellent. Unaware of the musings of his host, the cage poured himself another glass. I trust your stay in my village has been a hospitable one he asked. Thus far, yes, considering he'd met an impetuous little punk and already been dragged here against his will. Ah, uh, damn, but the man read his expression like a book. I see you've met Hiro, then. You'll have to forgive his behavior. The council has been grooming him to succeed Mefer some time now. A touch of arrogance is to be expected among the young, don't you think he laughed softly at the thought? Between the two of us, I'd rather someone more capable claim my seat. Someone like Sasori, for example. If he noticed a muscle jump in Naruto's jaw, he did not acknowledge it. Did you has produced many of our finest poisons the Keisuke continued. A master puppeteer, and at such a young age truly a prodigy. Humble, too. Nothing like Haruko. Shinobi ought to know their place in the hierarchy, wouldn't you agree Hiro has yet to learn that? I wouldn't mind at all if Sasori were to take his place beside me. What are you saying? I'm not saying anything, Achiha. Just that accidents are quite common in our line of work. Naruto didn't rise to the bait, he'd just been given permission to take a life for political gain. Despite that it was suddenly all he could do not to use the sharing and to plumb the man's mind for information. Sasori. Sasori was here in this village someone like that could never be Keisuke. He shuddered at the thought. Keizama was quick to you like your new weapon. 
It has been useful, Maruto admitted, glancing down at the black tanto he'd been gifted. The very act felt like a betrayal of himself. I am told it was made by a master blacksmith from your village. Indeed, the case kids replied silkly. What you have there is chakra reactive ore. The blade will expand or contract as you see fit. Naruto's surprise must have been evident, because the case kids laughed again. What, did you think we would give such a paltry weapon to someone of your caliber? I would thank you not to test it in my precincts, though. My guards are a bit twitchy thanks to the war. Well then, that would explain the chakra he'd been sensing for the last five minutes. What do you think of our Kanoichi, Naruto, another question, but this one evoked a frown. I have only met one. Takura, then. His cold gaze fell upon the Kanoichi in question. What do you think of her? Naruto turned to consider his answer a moment, then supplied the only answer he could. The truth. She seems an exceptional shinobi, Keisuke-sama. Isn't she? Though Keisuke-sama nodded. Her line is unmatched in our village. I dare say she'd be more than a match for you in close combat. MMY Lord Pekura's cheeks colored in surprise, the admission having caught her off guard. You honor me with your words. How about it then? Achiha is she not beautiful? Now it was Naruto's turn to color. He was no by any account, but being placed on the spot in such a matter would be enough to ruffle even a cage's feathers. She is so very beautiful. You may have her, then. Beside him, Pekura turned absolutely ashen. Naruto swallowed. Hard. He'd been expecting a request for a spar or some such, not an offering to bed the woman all right. Relax. He told himself. You can talk your way out of this. Just stay calm and don't let him get to you. There was a silence as he contemplated his next move. Then, I beg your pardon. I said you may take her back to Kanoha with you as your wife. The wind shadow continued amicably, no doubt sensing the sudden shift in mood. Consider her my gift to you. As a matter of fact, I'm in a good mood today so I will lend you another. You may bring her and any other chunin you wish to Kanoha upon your return. Take them with my blessings and when you become the next Hawkage, remember the generosity of Suna and her leaders. This man was was making one hell of an assumption there. Naruto didn't know what to make of it. Did he assume he was like most Uchiha, constantly lusting for greater powers that he was going to forcibly wrest the mantle of Hawkage from Saruto by his shoulders? And in return, in return the man looked offended. I ask for nothing in return, only that you remember my kindness this day. In return for that I shall promise you this we will aid and abet you in every possible way in this way. No matter the cost nor the loss of life we will fight by Kanoha's side until the last man, woman and child. Is that the answer you desire here is the treaty, you may read it to your liking. Naruto did just that, his sharing and flaring to ready every word and subtext, anything that might be slanted to Suna's advantage. Naruto bristled as he read over the don'ts, there had to be more at work here. There just had to be. Every item here benefited Kanoha in every possible way. The only thing Suna truly stood to gain was protection and assistance should they fall under attack by enemy forces. And all he had to do was accept two of their Kanoichi into the fold. And if Pakura wishes to stay. At his elbow, the Kanoichi flinched as though she'd been struck. She has no choice in the matter. The Keisuke dismissed the woman with a wave of his hand. I have spoken. She will go with you for the good of Sunabe cause I have ordered it. Now, I ask only that you sign on the dotted line. Pakura didn't move, but her eyes suddenly sought his. He had an idea of what was going through her head. She was in shock at being offered up like cattle by her Keisuke to appease Kanoha. She'd laid her trust with this man and how had he repaid her by tossing her aside. There was so much anger in those orbs, though whether it was directed at him or the Keisuke, he knew not. Only that he had to make a decision. Now, here and now, before the Keisuke lost his patience. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I refuse these terms? Then I'm afraid our alliance is null and void. Keisuke's tone brooked no further argument. Naruto hissed in a sharp intake of breath. In that case, he began, the words were acid in his throat, I. K-A-Z-K-A-G-S-A-M-A. -A -A Naruto was almost grateful when the door slammed open, cutting off whatever he might have said. And ate all but flung himself into the room, the spectacled face so fraught with terror that Keisuke didn't even deign to strike him down on the spot. Hirasama has been kidnapped in the town square. Aw, oh, damn it. Naruto muttered. Why is this shit never easy? Takura was already gone, darting out a window before anyone could say she wasn't needed. By all means, chase after her. The case could urged, but the words were empty, merely a formality. It would be horrible if something were to happen to him. Swearing, Naruto lunged out into the village after her. In the shadows of his hat, a small smile twisted at the case kid's face. Hey, are you all right? Takura resolved herself not to speak as they flitted across the rooftops, not to look at the Uchiha for fear of revealing her emotions. Her tears. To display emotion was a weakness, one that could be exploited, just as she had been. If her Keisuke, the man in whom she had laid all her hopes and dreams, was willing to ransom her off to Kanoha for the sake of peace whom could she trust the Uchiha he seemed a nice enough fellow, or at least one hesitant about claiming her body like some prize cut of meat. Hey, Hakura cried out in surprise as he moved to block her with his body, forcibly arresting her movement by grabbing her wrist. This close she was suddenly aware of just how tall he was head and shoulders above her, not just in terms of height, but skill as well. He wasn't ruffled in the slightest, and yet here she was, nearly a sobbing wreck at the Keisuke's betrayal. 
because that's was what it was was and it he'd all but signed her death warrant by giving her to the Achia, uprooting her from the life that she'd known all this time and she wanted to kill him for it if that aid hadn't come barging in when he had. She would have thrown herself at the sand aim, deciding to die at the edge of his iron sand rather than become someone's trophy. I said, are you all right? All right, she whispered brokenly into his. How can I be all right? She felt like an idiot ready to weep into the of a stranger she barely knew forced to be a wife to a man she'd just met he had struck her interest true. But that had been when she thought she had a choice not this arranged marriage for the sake of her village even knowing that many before her had done the same wasn't enough to mend her her heart as it were. She could only flounder in disbelief at what had been wrested away from her. You can cry, if you want. I will not she struggled out of his grasp, surprisingly he let her go. I am a Kanoichi almost immediately she withdrew, rubbing at her wrist. I would never shed such tears. Oi, you were just sold out by your leader. It's all right to be a bit upset. I am not upset she all but shrieked. That was a lie and Pekura knew it. She was distraught. You don't know me. No, but I'd like to. Like to me, you mean. She remarked bitterly. Something in his eyes hardened then. No, I mean I'd like to get to know an admirable Kanoichi who deserves better than that s of a cage. Mere words. She snapped back, but her voice warbled on the last note. Empty of promise. I could always kill him. Onyx snapped into scarlet in dire warning. No one would know. No one but her. Though he had hurt her, she was still a Kanoichi through and through. She would do as she was told but that didn't mean she had to reveal Naruto's threat just now, did it? You really do deserve better than him. Insufferable man he just wouldn't let it drop, would he? And how would you know? I've seen his type before. In that instant he seemed to age before her eyes. Not in the physical sense, but more in the spiritual sense. It was all in his eyes, they looked so tired, like he had lived for far too long and a part of him had given up and was just waiting to die. It was enough to shock whatever wariness she'd had for him right oof of Pekura. This man had lived through countless horrors in his life, and yet he was still trying, despite her best efforts, to wrest her out of this impossible situation. You really have, haven't you? More than you know. Pakura looked at him then, the movement causing her intricate sunset and jade-colored bangs to form the hint of a shroud around her face. His sharing and seemed to blur in the morning's light. Aroto couldn't miss it and his expression reflected his intrigue. Pakura tilted her head to the right, then swayed it back left and Naruto blinked in amazement. In the woman's movement, his own eyes seemed to dance. And with Nato still obviously mesmerized, Pakura leaned forward and quite softly brushed her lips with his own. It took several heartbeats, but that seemed to break the spell and the Uchiha leaned away, staring at her with puzzlement. Why did you do that? He asked in a voice that seemed hard to find. Because I believe you. She whispered. Naruto wet his head curiously, and when he started to protest, Pakura put a finger over his lips to silence him. Don't be a fool, she said with a small, sad smile. I'm not worth throwing your career away. This is why I hate village politics. Naruto muttered, scarlet orbs fading back to black. Always screwing everything up, come on, we've got a brat to save. Reluctantly she took off after him, descending into the streets below. What was that just now what had made her him she didn't know and likely wouldn't for many more days. The point in puzzling it out now. Not when the future Keisuke was in danger. There he is. Naruto skidded to a dead halt when he saw the shinobi in the town square. It was obviously one of Gari's men, as if the apocalyptic rage that nodded the man's face wasn't enough, the Burns answered all his questions almost immediately. What it did not answer was how in the hell the man had managed to incapacitate Hiro and Asuna Kanoichi by himself let alone wreath his body in enough explosive tags to blow a mile deep crater in Sunagakure. Insanity didn't even begin to define this man. He glanced furtively every which way, the look in his eye was one of sheer madness, someone who had nothing left to lose but his own life. But if he lost it, so would many. You the man raged, the moment he laid eyes upon Naruto. Keep your eyes away from me demon monster murderer you killed my captain s filth Kano I won't live to regret your actions the prone forms of the Hiro and the Kanoichi offered no resistance. It was up to them to do something. Calm down, Pekura interjected with a calmness she no longer felt. How could she after what she had just done what are your demands we can talk about this. Talk he screeched there's nothing to talk about. Sooner you whores are just as bad as them you murdered us like pigs butcher us like cattle now. I'm going to do the same to you clutching Hiro and the girl closer to himself. He cackled madly. Hell I'll take the you all the hell with me we can all burn together just like he burned me. You're insane. Naruto frowned. And you need treatment. Don't touch me the man flinched aside as Naruto sharing and span into existence. Don't even look at me I know your tricks he told me all about them I won't be deceived. Naruto froze, turning to ice in his veins. Hey, the true Uchiha the man was raving now, clearly crazed, or so everyone seemed to think. He restored my body told me the truth sent me here to kill you, traitor and I will lie. The Dara how the hell is that even possible? That was when Hiro's gold dust smashed into his face with all the force of a sledgehammer. Whatever the Iwanina had been about to say ended then and their high's mouth was suddenly flooded with so much of the stuff that he may well have choked on it. And given a few more seconds, he just might have. But they didn't have a few seconds. Even as the future Keisuke wrenched himself free, the man released the kill switch, setting dozens upon dozens of tages aflame. Everyone fled or ran in that awful instant, all save the four shinobi for whom his wrath was reserved. His temper inflamed beyond all point of salvaging, the man reached down to ignite the rest of the tags strapped to his body. 
With his mission having failed, he was determined to at least take a few of them with him for the glory of Iwa and his Suchikage, he would purge these s. Die. There was no time to decide, he could only save one. Not both. So he grabbed the girl instead of the boy and dove for cover. In that instant he was vaguely aware of Hiro's cry of shock, then of Pakura, flinging a fire into the man's with devastating effect. But it was already too late. Naruto saw with his sharing in what would happen an instant before it occurred and reacted calling upon a deadly power he daren't have touched until this very moment. An azure ribcage formed out of the nothing, blue bone breaking into the beginnings of a shoulder, then an arm, an elbow. Then came the explosion and orange fury burned the world white. The incomplete Suzusnu served its purpose, acting as a buffer between the three of them and the blast. The Uchiha groaned as he dusted himself off, the grit and gravel of Sunagakure already etched into his uniform. A suicide bomber who the hell did that anymore still being the dirt and dust that had gotten into his immaculate uniform, the former Yuzumaki turned to face the girl he'd just rescued from certain death. The same could not be said of her companion, however, without the flying thunder god Technikwekers, this body of he simply wasn't fast enough save both. Whomever Hiro had been or had been destined to be, he was dead now. Dead as dead could possibly be. Well, he muttered to himself, that could have gone off better. Agreed, his college muttered beside him brushing herself off with a groan. Her scorch release had been key in diffusing the blast, though she was far too humble to ever admit it. Though I had not expected him to detonate himself in such a spectacular fashion. Her hazel eyes quietly regarded the small crater that had once been the market district. It would have been far larger had she not managed to detonate some of those tags preemptorily. The Iwagakir assassin had only managed to take two lives instead of dozens. His own and that of a shinobi. Any injuries, he asked. Here, I can heal. Takura started, brushing off his hand with a flush. I would rather you attend to the Kanoichi beneath you, Acha. Way off. The teenager they'd rescued managed groaned, dusting herself off with a pained hiss. While where she took one look at her companion's charred corpse and turned bone white. Oh my god. Hey, Naruto patted the girl's face back to him. He knew well enough that if he gave her a chance to stare over long at her comrade's corpse the poor girl would just break down. Don't look at him. Look at me. Are you alright? Are you injured? What's your name? The trick was to bombard them with so many questions that they didn't have time to think there would be time to grieve later. If there was even the slightest of possibilities that the attacker wasn't acting alone. Her voice was numb, though thankfully not with shock. Tarura. Rank. C.H. Chunin. Injuries. None. Measurements. Huh. Kidding. Kidding. He sighed. If she had enough energy to be angry, then she'd be just fine. Right then, Karachin, I need you to focus. Can you stand? H. Hi. Naruto froze as he helped her up, as he got a good look at her, realization swarming over him. Brown hair. Purple eyes. Merciful Kami above and Yami below. This was no mere Kanoichi in his arms. He'd just saved Gara's mother from certain death and if that boy with the gold dust was who he thought he was, then that blackened body had to be Gara's father. That was who Hiro was. No other shinobi wielded such a technique and if they did, he didn't know of them. Meaning, ah, uh, yes, what the hell happened here? Naruto didn't even look up as Tsunade's voice pierced the air above him. Jury and Orochimaru arrived soon thereafter, pausing only to gop at the massive hole the man had punched in the village before bringing their attention to bear upon Naruto. In the end it was the latter, not the former, who asked the million dollar question. What did you do? Naruto took one long look at Pakura, then Karura, and sighed. Yeah, kind of a long story there. Hey, and, and there you have it Naruto finally starts changing things en masse no one sees him for what he really is, and more and more he's losing pieces of himself. He remembers what he once was but more and more he's starting to see just how much a mess he's walked into. And now he has the main Jikaiyo uncertain of whether or not it will make him blind. Ain't that lovely on the plus side he's attracted Tsunade's attention and unknowingly started to ensnare her heart. We've started and ended the Suna arc in style here folks, and Naruto Sunint and Shinala picked up two girls hope you enjoyed it on another note. Naruto has officially decided to atri and convert Orochimaru to the side of good for the sake of Kanoa, rather than end the best start we'll see how that walkers out. We'll get to see interactions and potential arguments between his ladies next chap we look forward to it, you know. God this is going to be fun to write. So many ideas but feel free to suggest something. Pairing is still up in the air, but Makoto is most likely going to be involved, although I will gladly take any other recommendations that are offered. Kushin is falling for him but the question does remain, will Naruto ever reciprocate her feelings I'm leaning toward yes in time I may even include Tsunade, seeing as how the age gap has shrunk to almost nothing now. Makoto may have a slight lead, but the pairing is still entirely up in the air vote review tell me what you want. Soin the immortal words of Atlas. Review would you kindly and of course, enjoy the preview guess what happens. Aim. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. You give me a team, and the first thing you do is send me to aim. I wish it were otherwise, but you have proven yourself too capable. Hurzen replied, steepling his fingers. Your actions in Suna garnered a great deal of attention after all. He made no mention of Pakura and Kara, that went without saying that Naruto had made a coup by securing the two Kanoichi for Kanoha, regardless of what some might think. So what's the mission? A rank is matter of fact. And Naruto pressed, Sarutobai continued. Hanzo's been making trouble along the border for too long now, and needs to be dealt with. I've already sent Juriyekun and the others on ahead. 
If you hurry, you should be able to catch up with them. Besides, these three are quite capable, as I'm sure you'll see. I'm sure they'll become Chunin in no time. Naruto's only response was to pinch the brow of his nose. Let me guess, I have no say in this whatsoever. None at all. Now see for yourself. As if on cue, a soft knock sounded on the door. Ah, there they are now. Come in. Two youths entered, closing the door behind them. I would like you to meet your team. Naruto's brow furrowed as he beheld the three youths assembled before him by Sarutobai. He'd fought and railed against this from the moment he'd set foot back in Kanoha, but in the end cooler heads had prevailed. So here he was in the old man's office, silently ruining his new rank as Jonin. He recognized the young Kuranai Ui almost immediately those ruby red eyes were a dead giveaway. The boy, he didn't know. He had silver hair like Kakashi but there was no way it was his old sensei. Kakashi was still a kid in the academy if he recalled correctly. It wasn't until Sarutobai identified him as Ibuki Morino that he actually got a rise out of Naruto. Oh, this was rich these two had scared the crap out of him when he was a kid but now the tables were turned speaking of tables. Where was the third student? Sarutobai seemed to realize it as well. Where is Yuzumaki Kushina he asked. Naruto's head snapped around so quick it might have flown clear off his neck. Somewhere in the back of his mind, his darker half cackled. Naruto only had one word for them both. No, yes. Hers and answered immediately, ignoring the killing intent that flooded the room. She hasn't had a sensei since her last one died in action a year ago. As she seems quite attached to you, I deemed it fitting. She's too old. A genin is a genin. The sandim remained unmoved by his plight. Besides, and here he did become him closer, you're one of the few shinobi who can control her should it attempt to beach the seal again. I trust you will treat this matter with the utmost discretion. Before Naruto could answer, a voice was heard from beyond the door. Those fools weren't arm wrestling, they were playing life death match Titebane. Hi, hi. One of the Ambu answered. Go right on in. Instead of opening slowly, the door flung itself open with a resounding crash admitting a blur of orange and black. Yuzumaki Kushina, reporting for Dudiga Naruto she skidded to a grinding halt, eyes wide at the sight of him. When did he get back from your mission? Yo, just a few hours ago. The Uchiha colored at the sight of the girl. Beautiful as ever, her long, lustrous red hair trailing after her loud entrance. Hishi ate strapped proudly to her forehead. And was she wearing orange it was almost enough to draw a smile to his face, the sight of his favorite color stirring up fond memories deep within his heart. Still, the scowl refused to depart from his face. Sarutobai's next words only made it deepen. Meet your new sensei, Kushina. Her grin was practically ear-splitting and why adorable, he had to admit. S-E-N-S-E-I. 